when I was growing up, they told us, oh, like, you guys are more prone to diabetes or you guys are more prone to heart disease. But it wasn't until I was about 23 years old that people in my life actually started to pass away from this. That's really the point behind um, Supermarket is just eradicating this unnecessary amount of death that happens um, that can be fixed with just food. There's about 119 liquor stores in South LA and there's only 91 grocery stores. So there are swaths in the community where there are no grocery stores, yet you could easily go buy a extra value meal or a combo somewhere. It's easier to find a soda than an apple. We're a low cost organic grocery that makes it affordable for people to eat well in Los Angeles' food deserts. We provide fresh fruits and vegetables. Everything we serve is 100% organic. And in addition to produce, we also carry um, staples like nuts, dates, um, coconut oils. During the COVID crisis, we did a big giveaway where we were giving out like uh, beans and rice and lentils and things that are shelf stable. So there already was an issue with food access and um, you know the COVID crisis made that very apparent. Families that live in low-income residences, they may not have access to foods or stores like Whole Foods and some of these other um, stores that are well known for having fresh vegetables and, and, and other options. There may be more convenience stores, corner stores, stores that may actually have canned good items with a lot of salt in them. That may not be the best option for you if you have high blood pressure. This also speaks to many years um, and generations of disenfranchised realities for South LA. One of the interesting facts about the 92 rights as an outcome was South LA created coordinated lists of things that they needed as a community to sort of rebuild. And one of the major um, asks during this time in terms of rebuilding was more grocery stores. What was talked about in 92 has been unfulfilled since. Those are the same demographics of people who in multiple states are the ones with the highest rates of these chronic conditions. But I think this has just unveiled things that have been there for decades that we have had blinders on, but COVID-19 unveiled it in such a way that you don't have the luxury, no matter how privileged you are, you don't have the luxury to ignore it. If you can't control what's on your fork, you can't control your lifespan, you can't control how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis, you can't control your life. The work that we do is really to liberate communities across America eventually from the issues that they're plagued with, with health in access. Context of white supremacy. Gus T. Renegade in for another broadcast, hopefully to share constructive information on the system of white supremacy today's date Tuesday December 1 2020 so I have been told all about the cheddar biscuits today man mm -mm -mm. Woo! eat well use logic Gus T renegade and for another broadcast hopefully we will have something constructive to offer uh, for folks tuning in that was so wacky the audio segment that we heard to start off with I said, man our timing has been whew. did you hear that report was in the LA Times they were talking about how COVID-19 this year everything with the pandemic in California has been hit hard repeatedly they've got the new they have so many new restrictions the San Francisco 49ers have been kicked out of the state NFL can't even play a game in San Francisco because of the Rona. What a year it has been. But that report was in the LA Times just maybe Sunday, I think, within the last couple of days. And as you heard, they were talking about how COVID-19 has impacted uh, areas with non-white people, even though they didn't use that language, urban areas and all the rest of it. Pussyfooting. Uh, but talking about non-white areas predominantly that 
food deserts and not having access to high quality foods. They don't have a whole foods on every corner. Do you hear the beginning part of the report? They said they have more liquor stores than grocery stores. Not that I'm stunned and not that I know anything about that at all. I've talked for years about being spoiled here in Seattle. I went to the grocery store today and hooked it all up. Cheddar biscuits. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Uh, I lived in California and when I stayed there, uh, we had one, two, there were at least two, maybe even three grocery stores that were within like a three, four block radius uh, of my residence. However, for many other people, all you had to do was move a few miles over and that started to change drastically. It started to be long distances to getting to grocery stores, depending on where you live. But anyway, within all of that, they said, man, way, way back, many, 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 many moons ago. We had the riots about Rodney King and they came up about the beating of Rodney King and subsequent acquittal of the officers, race soldiers. And they said they had a list, uh, a report, a list of things to help solve problems, improve in quality of life for black people like the late Rodney King. And one of the things on that list was grocery stores. And they still don't have them still at this late date whole new century and we still trying to get those grocery stores they didn't even say a whole foods just a grocery store embarrassing that is though why we are doing the program for this evening before we segue man freaking rodney king can you believe it we are reading oriental james simpson the account as told by jeffrey tubin his book the run of his life the people first OJ Simpson I'm loving it looking forward to Thursday I can't wait I'm so excited Uh, our second section lots of Rodney King talk uh, all throughout that text that's why I said I can't believe it like at this moment we're more to come on Rodney King or Rental James and California LA all of that we will continue our SoCal theme in two days cannot wait reading more important than watching television book club anywho uh, you can share let people know that we're on live uh, if you think it would be constructive for people to hear tips about eating well and particularly getting your children to eat well uh, share let people know that we're on live the number is seven two zero seven one six seven three hundred the code five six four nine four three pound press star six one if you would like to participate you can share the number share the link so people can listen online Uh, we are at facebook facebook facebook.com forward slash the problem is white people Uh, mark zuckerberg and company deleted one of our facebook pages but we have many other groups i have my page as well that i just gave out you can always follow there i always post the events generally at least a day in advance so you can see the upcoming broadcasts times guests all that good stuff facebook.com forward slash the problem is white people also on twitter at until justice anywho cheddar biscuits man I don't know if Red Lobster is defunct. I don't know if Red Lobster is open due to the Rona. Maybe they're doing curbside and Uber Eats and all the rest of it. I don't know. I have not. I do not eat out in general, and I do not eat out really at all since the Rona. I was just talking to black female about that here in Seattle. Because they have a number of wonderful vegan outlets, even some black owned no eating out for Gus T since the Rona but they have all the wonderful uh, food options places that you can go out to get food and what have you I guess Red Lobster is here I don't know I feel like I've seen a Red Lobster uh, here in Seattle but if you put a gun to my head I'm sorry, take me to the nearest uh, Red Lobster Gus T man if I don't have my phone or my computer close by like woof, I would struggle like uh, 
I, I guess I haven't eaten at a Red Lobster since I've been in Seattle. And then the last few years or so, I've been vegan, so I wouldn't be going to a Red Lobster. But I do remember the Cheddar Biscuits. Victims, enemies, ladies and gentlemen, attempted. Gus T had vegan Cheddar Biscuits before we went live. Not just vegan cheddar biscuits. I had, let me give the full, since this is a food program, we do that a lot. Like, what did you eat? So I had vegan cheddar biscuits, salad with ranch dressing, homemade ranch dressing, uh, and cheddar broccoli soup, obviously vegan. Pictures will be on the blog it was absolutely amazing. Uh, I was stunned. This was the first time that I made the vegan cheddar biscuits. I hadn't had them in years, so I was a little bit skeptical, like they're not going to taste, you know, the way and blah, blah, blah and all that. But they were cheesy. <sighs> Red Lobster would be, I don't know, envious, upset about the competition. I don't know, but that is what Gusty had. I was literally licking my fingers before we went live, finishing off my vegan cheddar biscuit. Mm. Anywho, all of this about food. That's what we're talking about for the broadcast. Uh, and I'll explain what uh, prompted this all of a sudden. Uh, I will just say with food, I've been saying we had, you know, the cows counter racist yoga retreats. We've had Dr. Ruby Lathan on the program many times. We read Dr. Layla Africa's uh, Nutricide, the worst book ever uh, earlier this year. And even though that book is horrible, it did have uh, one or two uh, tidbits about healthful eating more fruits, vegetables, drinking more water, not drink, uh, consuming a lot of sugar and white flour and all the rest of it, trying to do better about uh, what we eat. We've invested a lot of time uh, in Bebe, in, in Bebe Ashanti. I uh, was on the program a few years back. Uh, we did a book review of William Dufty's Sugar Blues, which is actually mentioned in Nutricide. Uh, some years back, lots of great information there as well. Uh, just lots of different guests and times that we tried to emphasize that, a, as well as the yoga retreats about eating correctly. Mr. Fuller, certainly Dr. Cambon, Dr. Welsing, a number of our guests uh, have talked about the importance eating correctly. Race soldiers, they love, love, love. Pile up those McDonald's and liquor stores and the dollar store so you can go in there and get some Twinkies and some other non and no apples. That's what they said in the report. Can't find an apple. Have to put you on a scavenger hunt to find an apple, but liquor store, St. Ives, uh, got that no We got that by the barrel. Don't worry about that. Cigarette, get you some new ports. We got that by the barrel too. An apple. What? I don't know how to spell apple. Anywho, uh, as I said, many, many folks, Mr. Fuller included, have talked about the importance of eating correctly as being a crucial component to counter racism, replacing white supremacy with justice. That is at the core of this broadcast. Uh, just for added emphasis, I guess, a few other little tidbits. Uh, I have been vegan for the last, I don't remember, since the flood. Uh, so close to three years. Uh, that, you know, no meat products, no dairy, all the rest, lots of fruits, veggies, all that good stuff. In addition, I generally do organic. They talked about that in the clip, having a, a store available that is not Whole Foods, where you don't have to spend $20 for an apple or tomato, uh, where you have affordable organic produce, quality organic produce. Generally organic, and I think we've done... Uh, almost exclusively exclusively organic at all of the retreats uh, thus far. Uh, in addition to that, I do not do microwaves. Uh, I just, you know, if you're going to go through all that to be picky about what you eat and reading labels and trying to get organic, you don't want all those pesticides and chemicals uh, in your food. You want to get natural produce, whole foods, plant-based diets. That's the way that you want to try to be. Why mess all that up and then come back and dump a whole lot of chemicals and radiation uh, on your food with the frickin microwave? Um, I, and I used microwaves uh, growing up. Absolutely. Uh, that was a part uh, until I started here like, oh, maybe 
maybe no microwave. Maybe, uh, you know, you can just use the oven. I do have an air fryer that is superb for reheating foods. You can actually do cooking there as well, but it's also awesome for reheating foods and reheating them better so they'll be closer to the way they you know came fresh out of the oven or off the stove or whatever it is as opposed to just putting it in the microwave and it's you know but yeah no microwaves just trying to be better about preparing food how we eat food what foods we eat how we value the whole ritual of uh, food consumption so no microwaves as well. Baby steps, if that's a lot, if you've been, you know, eating McDonald's and hot dogs and all the rest and, and microwaving food, as Gusty did for many, many years, no judgment. I'm just saying it can be a lot to try to change all that at once, but just make sure I include that as well. I've talked a lot about being vegan, no dairy, no meat, blah, 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 all the rest of it. And I don't even think I talked about that at the retreat. No microwave either. Uh, let's see. And no preservatives. I said I do the organic. Dr. Lathan talked about that in great detail. She's been on the program many, many times. She has the great distinction, uh, at least in my opinion, of being the last non-white guest that we've had on the program for the time being. I have to see who comes on next. But until then, it was Dr. Lathan. And she put so much time and great effort. She is a uh, certified uh, nutritionist and talking about all those dyes and chemicals and why you might want to spend an extra quarter or two to get the organic bananas, the organic onions, the organic leeks, whatever it is, uh, to avoid all those chemicals and pesticides and whatever else uh, that they put on your food. Uh, and just a lot of the food that's got those preservatives and chemicals in it, they load all that extra sugar and salt in it to mask the taste where they've cut corners because uh, you'll find some products. I think it was like a shredded cheese that they had some years ago. They were putting like sawdust in it or it was a Parmesan cheese. I think they were putting like sawdust and all this other nonsense in it. Non GMO organic produce, whole based plant based eating whole foods, plant based eating can do wonders to help mitigate the Rona, keep that weight down, diabetes, heart disease, all of that can do wonders to have you in better shape, better immune health, uh, and just feeling better as you go about your day and trying to solve the problem. <sighs> Cheddar biscuits. Before I even push into the exact topic for what the whole broadcast of today is, I will emphasize also, I heard some folks saying, because they've heard me talk now for almost three years about being vegan and man, that's important. Justice, her time here, she was vegan as well. We've got a number of folks who tied that together as it should be. And <clears throat> some people have said, you know, man, I could feel the vegan, you know, trying to eat more plants and incorporate more fruits and vegetables into my diet. You know, that's sensible. You're not the first, you know, person to come along and say that Gus T right on. But some folks have said, man, it's a little bit difficult with the cooking. I don't have too much experience with the cooking or I don't have recipes or, you know, I just don't have a lot of time for cooking or I didn't grow up with that. That's not my, my strong suit. Uh, at this point, we even had some folks who said, uh, I'm making the transition. It's great. I've lost weight. I see the benefits of it, but I'm missing a few things, you know, like I used to, we, we had, we heard speak or I heard, uh, sweets specifically folks saying, man, I miss, you know, being able to get sweet potato pie or a good dessert, you know, a good chocolate cake or something, man. Like I, I miss all that, not being able to have dairy and milk and all the rest of it, man. To all of that, I say, number one, how do we start this off? The cheddar biscuits. That's what I had today. In addition to uh, broccoli cheddar soup salad with ranch dressing that I made and dessert. Don't think Gus T is not going to have dessert when the program is done for dessert, pumpkin pie made fresh. And with the dessert specifically, because like I, I think that was even on a program where someone said, man, it's tough. I can't get a donut anymore. Can't get a milkshake. Uh, maybe you don't get to live in Seattle, right? If you live in Seattle, you live in Los Angeles or California, excuse me, uh, Atlanta, Washington, D.C., some of the other big cities, it will be easy. New York City, Philadelphia, it'll be easy to get anything you want. Vegan ice cream, uh, all kinds of vegan confectionery items, candies, cakes, pastries, whatever you want. Pistachio ice cream, absolutely. Red velvet cake, absolutely. However, 
even if Gusty did not live in wonderful Seattle where they do have vegan uh, bakeries and vegan ice cream parlors and all kinds of uh, vegan treats at the store. They had vegan uh, donuts. They have a vegan donut shop here as well, but then they have vegan donuts at the grocery store and all the rest of it. Just since August, okay, I'm not doing a half a year, just since August, I'm really kind of stopping at the yoga retreat we had in Washington, D.C., I have had let's see sweet potato pie, banana pudding, pineapple upside down cake, <laughs> salted caramel pecan cinnamon rolls, best in the world. I was never even foolish about cinnamon rolls, but the salted caramel pecan cinnamon rolls Whew. signature let's see just since August what else uh, oh, chocolate peanut butter ice cream that was ridiculous mm, 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 since August. chocolate co- uh, chocolate chip cookies Anything else since August banana pudding with vanilla wafers and Anything else? We'll leave it there. I have to come back and oh, I had pecan pecan pie. Oh, and uh, sweet potato casserole with pecans and toasted vegan marshmallows. That's just since August. Now there are quite a few other things that I made if we were going all the way back to the beginning of the year, but this is just since August. Saying that to say, there's absolutely. Nothing. I had cheddar biscuits today, man. <laughs> the Red Lobster cheddar biscuits. There is absolutely nothing that you should miss out on being plant-based whole foods. Nothing. Uh, you should. It should just be uh, sitting down and thinking. These are foods that I really enjoy. These are foods that I really like. Let's see if I can make these a little bit healthier. Uh, even the sweet potato pie. I made uh, sweet potato pie in Florida. We had cows listeners who were there who can, you know, verify it was not horrible. It wasn't some, you know, icky diet thing. We had sweet potato pie in uh, Washington, D.C. Awesome. No gripes. People took some home both times. Amazed. Didn't have any complaints about it at all. You can enjoy all of the yummy items, desserts and, and otherwise, even being plant based. Uh, they have so many uh, non-dairy milk options, non-dairy cheese options. Uh, it's just it should really be no excuse uh, for you and the transition. I know Red in Ohio and other folks talked about this. They have so many transition foods now. When I say transition foods, I mean like the fake burgers and fake hot dogs. They have fake fish sticks and fake fish fillets and fake sausage links. And I mean, it just goes on and on and on. They have the fake eggs and uh, almost anything. I can't imagine anything. And these are just things you don't have to do any cooking. The ground beef, the impossible burgers and all that. They have so many food items that it should be much easier for you to transition. If you've been eating a lot of those junk food type things to transition, start eating some of those other products, the fake meat type things, and then see if you can gradually work your way to more whole foods. But all of that to say you do not have to miss out on Anything you can enjoy, really tasty, delicious versions of all of the, you know, items that you ate before. All of that said, and and again, I am not someone who grew up eating healthy foods and, you know, lots of quinoa and hummus and brown rice. I did not grow up eating. I grew up eating hot dogs and Big Macs and Slurpees and all the other nonsense, pork rinds, country ham sandwiches. That's what I grew up eating. Trust me, you can have outstanding food that still tastes great, not have to miss anything, and still be really excited every time it's mealtime. Now, getting more specific to why we are here today for this broadcast, I posted a segment, mm, I think it was last week. Uh, I posted it on Twitter at Until Justice. And it was about McDonald's and it was specifically, I talked about it on workplace racism. It was, they closed the branch because a worker tested positive for COVID-19. 
I posted this and my thought process was like, wow, we have been on it with McDonald's all year long. Even before the Rona, uh, we read uh, Franchise, Victim of Racism, phenomenal book all about the McDonald's uh, franchise and their history uh, of racism with black franchise owners and all the rest of it. Uh, like I said, way back, feels like forever before the Rona even got here. We were talking about that, and there were so many different Marcia, Marcia Chatlin. That's her name. I forgot. Black female. She's with us way, 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 way back in February. And they were talking about different components of racism. They even talked about the food deserts. They even talked about some of the stuff talked about being talked about now with lots of black people in those urban areas and food deserts and all the rest. They don't have Wi-Fi. And so sometimes the only location you can go to get Wi-Fi is the McDonald's. And of course, if I'm going to go for Wi-Fi, I just might if I have to sit here for an hour to get schoolwork or upload something or whatever it is, I just might be tempted to get some chicken nuggets or a quarter pounder or a Happy Meal or whatever else it is. Apple pie might be smelling good if you have to sit there long enough. Anyway, so we talked about all that this year and it was so many different components to it. If you see the image that I have associated with the program for today, it has a picture of the late Kobe Bryant. What an ugly, ugly year it has been. Man, forgot that was this year he passed away. So it has an image of Kobe Bryant. And Kobe Bryant, two ways, not just Kobe Bryant, McDonald's All-American, right? They get a whole lot of young people to watch that McDonald's All-American game. And I mean, this is going back decades. You'll see like Michael Jordan in the McDonald's All-American game. Kobe Bryant in the McDonald's All-American game. Zion Williams in the McDonald's All-American game. LeBron James, like anybody who's anybody. Oh, there they are. And Ronald McDonald and dunking it through. That's one for Kobe Bryant. Then, if you're really good, uh, LeBron James. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant get you to do that McDonald's commercial. They got him with a Big Mac. And the insidious thing is that for most of those athletes to perform at that level, you come out, you're going to be a Gabrielle Douglas and all the rest of it. Serena Williams, you are not eating chicken nuggets and McDonald's like LeBron is infamous for having a chef and being extremely mindful about his body. You are not going to be performing at your peak running around uh let me get uh, a quarter pounder and get one of those apple turnovers and spread it no in fact i went to a division one school i know division one athletes some of those folks now i'm sure it would depend on which program you go to some are more advanced than others but i know some folks who went there and they said our coach was so serious about that he said if i catch you with a soda in your hand buddy you are going to learn how to spell run when we get to practice just for a soda anyway so McDonald's gets you in so many different ways we had a listener who asked I posted that report about McDonald's they closed the branch worker called the Rona listener said man Gus do you have any tips on how do you get your offspring to stop eating at McDonald's and I said wow that's a good question again now I don't have children but that is a really good question now if we have any parents and you have tips if you have offspring and you know especially even if your children are older now if they're 19 20 or so-called adults and they don't eat fast food you know you the whole time that they were young and growing up if you had a plan or whatever if you all didn't eat fast food you didn't go to McDonald's or if you didn't do it very frequently whatever you did If your child is older and they don't do McDonald's, they turn their nose up at all that, get on the line. Star 6-1 and let us know what you did because I'm just giving suggestions, but I haven't tried any of this. I don't have children. Before I get to, to some of the tips as to why I thought this was so important, even worthy of a broadcast one i want to do my reminder about mcdonald's because i mean man i feel like we've been talking about mcdonald's all year long so dr marcia chaitlin she was on the program in february the setup for that sounded like fred do the mcdonald's menu chant 
Big Mac McDeal, tea, a quarter pounder, wisdom tea, filet of fish, a hamburger, cheeseburger, happy meal, but nuggets, tasty golden french fries, regular and larger sizes, salad, chef, a garden, or a chicken salad, oriental, big, big breakfast, egg, like moment, hot cakes and sauces, mainly biscuits, bacon, egg, and cheese, and sauce, and dainty, hash, too, and for dessert, hot apple pies, and sundaes, three varieties of sauce, or foam, two kinds of shakes, and chocolate chip cookies, and to drink a Coca Cola, Diet Coke, and orange drinks, Sprite, and coffee, decap, two, a low fat milk, and orange juice. So, we get this all one Good, now do it backwards. This motherfucker, I, I'm actually enjoyed playing against and enjoy watching. So I'm actually a fan of this motherfucker. And you can ask him about who deserved MVP in the McDonald's game. Yes, I have to get that answer. If he stamps you, you're good. Because I don't know if I believe it until he... Because I didn't watch the game. So if he stamps you... If Kobe stamps that I should have won MVP in the McDonald's 96 All-American game, somebody needs to send me a trophy. You know, I, I tell you what, the first time I ever, I actually ever heard E-40 was at an a, a All-American camp. Yeah. We were all hanging out in dorms. Uh-huh. And back then, it was nothing but Biggie Nas. Right. right? That's, that's it. That's stuff, right? That's so it. They, were, they were playing E-40 and shooting craps. And I'm like, man, what, y'all got to show me a <laughs> <laughs> What is this? What's going on right now? You know? Yeah. So that, yeah. It was fun getting to know everybody and, you know, and then seeing kind of where we've all gone since then. Well, you guys that's played in the cool. McDonald's game together. And Jack has a, you won MVP, right? No. You won MVP. I should have won MVP. You did win MVP, didn't you? So, see, I'm glad you said that, Cole. So, Who won MVP? Shaheen Holloway. He had like 10 turnovers, oh, too, bro. But you know what got him MVP? Remember the bounce pass to Lester Earl? Yeah. And he dunked on Voss? Yeah. yeah. I think that was a big play. But I had I led the game in scoring. I actually was 8 for 10 from the field, 3 for 3 from the three-point line. But our team, yeah. me, you, Rip, Jermaine O'Neal, and uh, Shaheen Holloway. Yeah. Crazy starting five. That's crazy. I thought you did win MVP. No, I didn't. So he loves the fact that you thought he should have. But he said that, that, yeah, that's, no, all, that's all I wanted to hear. He wanted that. All I wanted we were to hear. about this before. He's like, Shaheen Holloway won, but Kobe knows I should have won. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did. I did. I did. Shaheen won it. Yeah. Oh, damn. What's up, Jay? What up? Where's Cal? At the J-O-B, man. What? He's still flipping those burgers at Nicky D's. Thanks, Calvin. He says he has a plan, man. He's the newest member of our management team. Calvin. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Don't my voice too. Oh. Yo, Cal. May we help you? <laughs> Not much, man. Well, I'm out. Hey, yo, yo, Cal. Now, what's the word on that job thing? Not for me. <laughs> for a friend of mine. Word. And the other kids got McDonald's. They outside going, we got McDonald's. Hamburgers. McDonald's. McDonald's. I got McDonald's. Oh. Context of white supremacy. I was stymied for a minute, just like, wow, that interview was with Kobe Bryant, and it was from this year. What a 2020. Anywho, uh, as I was listening to all that, that was number one. Like, wow, Kobe Bryant died this year, and that interview is from this year. Two, we just had uh, parents on and they were talking about <clears throat> trying to share information with your child about racism, white supremacy and feeling overwhelmed. Like you can talk until you're blue in the face, literally, and they still, you know, can ignore that totally and say that white people are great and not all white people are racist. And, you know, maybe even you are racist as a black parent for, you know, trying to talk this way about white people. Uh, the system is daunting. It's capital W, cap U.S. for a reason. Uh, I don't think they advertise spinach. Like, if I think hard about the foods that I eat on a regular basis, I told you I had that big salad, right, For uh, before I had it tuned in. I didn't just have cheddar biscuits. Uh, spinach was there. They don't advertise spinach. Mushrooms. I eat a ton of mushrooms. They don't advertise mushrooms. Broccoli, I love broccoli. They don't advertise broccoli. Bok choy, no, none of that. Whole foods, plants, veggies, generally they do not advertise. Ronald McDonald has a billion dollar advertising campaign. And as you heard, we talked about the Calvin commercials and all that. Sometimes they have specific commercials, much like Newport cigarettes, just to target black people. So, if Mr. Fuller is not talking crazy when he says, hey, eating correctly is one of the core things we should be doing on the path to universal woman, universal man, if he's not talking crazy, 
if you know Dr. Lathan is not talking crazy about all of this then whew, you have to be kind of exceptional and even that might fail but I mean at minimum you got to try to be exceptional with regards to eating and modeling that for your child and I guess that would be number one and I got another clip I'll go to right now to, to kind of emphasize this in fact I hush because I'm I'm not a certified food expert but I do have a sound clip and I play one clip from these folks earlier this year Judith Finlayson her last name just sticks in my head for some reason Finlayson uh, she co-authored the book you are what your grandparents ate right let's see if we can get her on the program because she's white I asked Dr. Lathan about that in fact I'm gonna just hush and let the clip play this is she and her uh, co-author Kent Thornton they are they're talking about epigenetics we've discussed epigenetics on the cows before and I think a lot of folks who discuss racism talking about epigenetics and how the impact of white terrorism can impact your DNA if you know let's say your grandparents if they were beaten terrorized let's say by a white dog that might impact your development you might have you know a fear of dogs you know where you're repulsed by them you don't feel bad sympathetic for dogs when they show them on TV it could take lots of different forms but we talked about it from a standpoint of white supremacy racism and even how it can impact your health they're going to talk about epigenetics in this clip and it will relate more to food or not more to it's going to relate directly to food but again so the lead into this was so if you are concerned about your children not eating at McDonald's you as an attempted parent your food game what you eat what you cook what food you have in that pantry had better be stellar maybe even what food your grandparents had in the pa uh, pantry you are what your grandparents ate the co-authors or actually both authors yeah context of white supremacy and now I get to talk about mice because one of the key ways that we learned about how this actually happens uh, is uh, through a key study that was done in 2003 and introduced the idea of in epigenetics. There's a group of mice known as the agouti mice who had very, very poor health. These mice were either very sickly or died very young, and that's because they had been bred to be beautiful. When a group of researchers doesn't necessarily mean, you know, if you're beautiful, you're, you're sickly. But, uh, but anyway, uh, these mice were because they were, they, had, they were bred for a variant of a gene. And um, when researchers took a look at these mice and fed them some targeted nutrients that affect an epigenetic process known as methylation, they not only cured the, the, the ill health in the mice, it cured their offspring. Their offspring had none of the um, chronic illnesses that the mice did, and the offspring of the offspring. So we now knew through the agouti mice that an, an epidemiological process was at work uh, in, in terms of this ill health. And we also knew that you could use nutrition to improve at least the process of methylation and possibly other processes. So that was a huge breakthrough uh, in terms of understanding the how of the why. Right, so the agouti mouse experiment uh, was done by a, a young person who worked in Randy Jertle's lab at Duke. And what he found, as has been described, was the first evidence we've ever had that the diet of a mother affects the way the genes work in the offspring. So just let me drive that home. We didn't know before. We thought it might be true. But we didn't know that a mother's diet 
could affect the way the genes get turned off and on in the baby, not just for the baby, but for the next generation. So that is still one of the most profound facts that we have learned in the last 25 or 30 years, and that is that maternal diets in particular are powerful determinants of epigenetics. Now, if you're not familiar with the term, I think I should define it for you. But all of you here have a set of genes you got from your mother and your father. And those set of genes are firm and will not change through your lifetime. However, the way those genes work is determined on how those genes get turned off and on, and that's called epigenetics. And that is a process by which nutrients can modify genes that for the rest of your life could be on or off based on your mother's diet, and by the way, your grandmother's diet too, since we're talking about three generations, right? Well, we can, let's talk a little bit about uh, Sweden, yeah, because that's a good story, uh, about a, a Swedish epidemiologist uh, named Lars Bergen, who, uh, for some reason, uh, decided to look at the history, I'd love to know why, uh, of the town that he grew up in. And uh, his family had lived there for generations. And he discovered that uh, the grandsons, it was an agricultural community, so it was very much defined by, you know, feast or famine. Some years there were great crops, and other years there, there weren't. Um, and um, he discovered that the grandsons of, the grandfathers who had eaten too much around the time of puberty were more likely to die young. He discovered in a later study that the granddaughters of women who were pregnant during a famine were more likely to die young. And this led us into really, or that scientists, uh, into the area of looking at how this was happening, and it was happening through epigenetic marks that happen when either sperm cells are forming around the time of puberty, or you may need to be reminded that a baby girl is born with all of her eggs. So those eggs are forming while she was in her mother's womb. So if her mother experienced famine, uh, it influences the quality of those eggs, just as the quality of the male sperm is influenced at the time of puberty. So this leaves, we now know from epigenetics, epigenetics marks on the reproductive cells, which are transmitted through the generations. Um, so we're going to go to that, the fetal programming. Now, nutrition is one of the main stressors that poor program for poor health, but there are others, and I can't, I want, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, there's an interesting fact uh, that we've learned since David Barker really made his initial discoveries. Context of white supremacy, Judith Finlayson, Kent Thornburg. Uh, they actually, they gave that talk here in Seattle literally just weeks before the Rona. I'm not sure if I knew about that book at that point, but man, I was like, that is, I wish I had taken advantage. Like I might not be able to catch them anytime soon with the Rona and all, but, uh, you are what your grandparents ate. Now, again, I said the reason for that sake, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I stopped it immediately. They were talking about stressors on health and they said nutrition, major stressor on health. That's what they've been talking about all this year, right? That's why we're doing well, one reason why we're doing this program. Stop your children from eating at McDonald's. I stopped it, but when he continued into other factors that stress and can deteriorate your health, 
environmental factors. I said, oh man, that was Harriet A. Washington and that was exactly where he went. Like, oh, if you're in an environment with radon and all this other things and you can't get fresh air, everything that they talked about with the Rona, wow, we talked about it. He just went right down the line and then he said, oh, and then if you're stressed and things like you can't pay your rent or people are messing with racism, white supremacy, got it. But that was why I stopped it immediately because they had already said nutrition, major stressor on health so I play that whole segment you as an attempted parent have to be really solid I mean really exemplary with your food game and by that I mean as I said what do you eat on a daily basis and that's like what do you eat daily for years not just I had a year of healthy eating and then we went back to dominoes and chicken wings and you know all the rest of it or we had a year and then we messed around for a little bit ice cream got to me and then we got it back together for a year and then we slacked off for you know five six years and then we got you know like steady consistent this is important this is counter racism eating well every day What you eat as an attempted parent, the foods that you purchase, where you go to eat, what foods you allow your child access to, what foods you have in the house. You have to be really exemplary with that, like every day for years, for life, really, um, to really make, I think, an impact. And sometimes it might be a type of a thing where it doesn't really get. Well, I'd say this, if you can start it young man modeling that and that's how you live at like from from the I was going to say from birth but from the womb as you heard there the impact is extraordinary even from the womb uh what the mother and father are eating from conception and maybe even before that have an extraordinary impact on the child's tastes and what type of foods they're going to crave uh so those 9 months You want to make sure you are not eating McDonald's, Hardee's, wherever you happen to be at, Carl Jr., Jack in the Box, not eating nonsense uh, for those nine months. And maybe even before Harry Day Washington talked about that, too, in a terrible thing to waste because so much is happening in terms of development of that child Uh, and taste buds specifically. And so much literature uh, talks about that. Your taste buds begin developing in the womb those first few years of life uh, your taste buds and rituals around food start being the, the groundwork for that for your life is laid right there so I would say at that time it should be no McDonald's at all and McDonald's is so insidious the same way that they will they, I say they're insidious in so many ways they will give you a LeBron James I said Kobe Bryant Michael Jordan they've all done McDonald's from uh, commercials and I think many of them as I just said these people don't eat McDonald's you're not going to sit around and be Mike Jordan and Zion, Zion Williams they fussed at him right get your weight together you're too chubby and all that get your weight together chef nutritionist all that you're not eating chicken nuggets and think you're going to be a billion dollar professional athlete that's not going to happen uh but McDonald's, you might be fooled and think, wow, Kobe Bryant was chomping on a Big Mac. Mike, Mike Jordan looked like he had, you know, a quarter pounder in his hand. That is not what is happening. And then they come back and they get you on the other end. They have the Happy Meals, the playground. That's how they get a whole lot of folks, you know, four or five years old. McDonald's, I want to go. I play in the little play area and, you know, get ice cream and they got the toys and all that. I mean, they are nefarious. Like, we can get you hooked on this garbage at like three, four, and you'll whine and beg your parents. And the food is addictive. That's what I said about preservatives. I said that at the very beginning preserve is something you wouldn't even think about but a lot of those chemicals are addictive uh, and it's beyond just you know I like McDonald's or cheeseburgers or tasty no this has got drugs and poison that makes you want more and eat and eat and eat and and eat even when you're not hungry and eat large quantities uh, of the food that's why the lays what they say can't eat one oh yeah guaranteed guaranteed all the, the drugs and things that we put in this so 
all of that to say the white supremacy deception and propaganda model is <laughs> we really cannot compete with it but you got to do your best one of the ways you do your best you are extraordinary as a parent with what you eat the foods you buy foods you give them access to you are also extraordinary your child is in the womb very young you're eating great you're already practicing that <clears throat> eating great cooking great once you have your child you never go to McDonald's that might sound extreme Hitlerist, Hitler-ish whatever again it's addictive and food is a really powerful thing like I said cheddar biscuits man like food is a really powerful thing you need food in order to live so I mean on a biological level it's powerful it's hitting so many different sensory elements you can smell it you can taste it I mean food and you develop so many memories uh, around food eating with people what are we doing around food I was saying uh, I was talking to some of our listeners who are attempted parents about this subject and they said man I have young children we got these stupid horror days I'm not starting any of that for them to develop any goofy traditions around oh it's Christmas and you know we gotta get Christmas cookies and oh we gotta get you know country ham biscuit like eh we are not doing any of that this is not an excuse for eggnog or trash we're going to eat great food we are not starting any goofy food traditions uh, with my young child victim of racism we're going to see if we can make our best effort to be exemplary with the diet bravo and that's the way that you have to think to just try not to get a lot of that stuff started because I can guarantee you with McDonald's, the holidays, most of those things, it is much better, especially those first, like the critical years, the first five, six years or so, zero. Like they say, man, lots of health professionals in the world. I'm not a health professional, but many health professionals in the world say it should be breast milk exclusively for the first five years. A number of health officials say first two years minimum. So it's, it, sh it should certainly not be two, three, four year olds. <laughs> they know the whole McDonald's menu, you know, and happy meals. That should not be happening at all. And again, it's addictive and you get those memories. I would be remiss if I didn't add, as I said, Kobe Bryant did commercials. LeBron James did commercials. Zion William probably will be lined up. If you really want to be exemplary with your food, you probably are going to have to greatly eliminate or greatly reduce, if not totally eliminate television that is where so much of the junk food programming is and it's that's why I say it's so insidious like it's targeted they will make sure those McDonald's commercials with LeBron James make sure that airs make sure we got any new uh, blizzards I used to love they have Dairy Queen we all at I used to love Dairy Queen like woo mm -mm -mm. Snickers blizzard like man let's do get 50 of them um, but they will make sure to advertise all of the bad. Like I said, they don't advertise bok choy. At least I haven't seen those. I don't think. If you see bok choy commercials, you let me know. They don't advertise asparagus. They don't advertise tofu. They advertise blizzards, Big Macs, all of that regularly. <laughs> in fact, uh, in fact, Super Bowl might be coming, or maybe it will, maybe it won't. We'll see with the Rona. But I mean, wow, they really pull it out. The Cheetos and potato chips and all of that. Your child cannot compete with that. That's what I mean. Like, it's no contest. Capital W, cap U S. You can talk all day long about health and blah, 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 and all this. Seeing that stuff on television as a child with the child's brain computer that is immature, still developing, no contest. So you probably have to greatly reduce, if not eliminate television, which is kind of a broken record. It seems like that is a core element of counter racism in so many respects, like 
limiting television, limiting child. If if not, I would just say just expect that your child is going to be very exposed and probably do a lot of nagging about all of the exciting new food options. The Baconator sandwich is coming out. They're going to nag you to death and they're going to know all about it, which is just going to make the job even harder uh, if they go out and shop with you or as they go out and are whizzing by. Like, oh, my God, the Baconator. Can we stop at Burger King? Like, you know may want to limit the television anyway uh, I assume the person who asked this question about getting your child to not eat, eat at McDonald's might have an older child where they they know what the golden arches is they've eaten a Big Mac or 12 and that type of thing your job is going to be substantially harder if that is the case obviously but all hope is not lost again now all of the, this is going to hinge on you as a parent you have to be exemplary with your food game and all of that that it entails like what are you eating every time it's meal time let's see what let's let's check it out what food do you allow into the house if you do eat out at all which i would try to discourage it totally the rona that i mean if they if it's a so-called silver lining that should be one they got all the diners shut down and dining out it's cold and you don't need to take any unnecessary risks we will work on our cooking we'll eat at home we'll make a whole family uh event project out of whatever it is we cook together we eat together take advantage i mean as an i don't have children but as an attempted parent like you should savor those moments anyway because your child is not going to be 10 forever they're not going to be 15 forever you're not going to be able to do those type of you know cooking with your young child uh moments together so take advantage if you all can cook together every day for the next seven months why that that might be one thing in a year of lots of misery and suffering and challenges that might be one thing like wow we learned how to cook so many things and we cooked those cheddar biscuits that Gus was talking about and blah, 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 and all of that. Like, make that an event to try to really get away from eating out at all. And if you are going to eat out, even then, not at McDonald's, not at, you know, any other nonsense. It, this, it, it should not be, this is our splurge, as they say. This is our treat to go, you know, get a cheeseburger or... I don't know, whatever the other nonsense, chicken wings, whatever the other nonsense is. It should not be that at all. It should still be, if you're going to go out, we're still going to eat healthy. They have restaurants that have great, healthy, you know, plant-based options that are tasty and all the rest of it. That's what we're going to do if we're going out, not we're going out. I say it should be cold turkey like never because the food is addictive. That's one. Or I mean, really, you don't need to say anything. Anything that's addictive. Mr. Fuller talked about that, about not increasing your needs. Anything that's addictive, like you have put some non food items in what I am, you know, purchasing under the guise of this is food. And that's nothing else to talk about. Stop right there. We don't need to get any more details like no, I just wanted an apple, not an apple with little MSG and magic salt. And come on, come on, come on. So in my view, it should be cold turkey. If you have a slightly older child, let's say they're 14, 15, whatever, you can be exemplary at home. I would still expect when they go out there at school and, and that type of thing. Hey, when we went to uh, when I went to school, there was a McDonald's right across the like literally right across the street from the school like we could run we had, i think our lunch break was like 35 minutes we could literally run across the street get mcdonald's it was across the street we could eat there or go back to the school and eat mcdonald's there and then go back to class i mean many of us did that you know the whole time that we were in school up until graduation uh and I, now that i'm thinking about it, there were a number of the schools that they were strategically close to you know a fast food restaurant or five uh sometimes uh there's probably going to be you know a lot of that you know for younger children that eating is a really social for people period eating is a social experience and i think especially for younger people that's like the hangout like let's go to mcdonald's we can hang out and they have cheap food right you don't have tons of money as a younger person so you can go get something from the dollar menu and all of that i think if you can do enough work with having quality food at home and talking to them about health and food and all of that, you can get them to where they still enjoy and go out and do the, the social component. Yeah, let's kick it. We'll sit in the parking lot, listen to music, blah, blah, blah. But no, thank you. I'm not going to eat that. Wait till I get home. I'll drink some water. No, I'll pass on a Big Mac. I don't do any of that. 
that's the goal that you can get there all of that to say I think major components if you're trying to change what your home eating rituals and patterns are I would say uh, really value food the system of white supremacy the value system is totally destroyed one major component of that is the food that's why we have all the industrialized food and mistreat the animals there and all the rest of it and get people expired food and blah 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 trying to make money and practice racism all that uh, but the other component or one of many components to not valuing food you have a lot of non-white people they don't have funds right you have a lot of non-white people they can't afford to go to Whole Foods I don't have $25 to spend on an apple I feel you Gus T is right there that's one so you have a lot of people they can't afford they will eat McDonald's and other go to the dollar store things of that nature because they don't have a lot of money so they feel like it's it will be challenging for me to try to eat healthy foods organic foods things of that nature that's one you'll have in the industrialized white supremacist food system that's why McDonald's will be appealing for a lot of folks food is not valued and or <clears throat> just not having a lot of money so I'm just trying to get the cheapest thing that I can I'm not thinking let me maximize and get the highest quality food that I can I'm just thinking let me get you know whatever the cheapest thing that I can eat food is not valued in a sense of time racism white supremacy again you got a lot of non-white people I myself have been on jobs where sometimes you don't even get a lunch break much less a lunch break where you could actually eat it's gotta be yep let me just go to McDonald's I can get some fries and eat that really quick or I can get a you know meal deal or whatever it is eat that really quick and boom get back on the job I can wolf that down in 10 minutes you don't have time to sit digest your food and actually get a fork and eat a salad and some cheddar biscuits something that it might take you more than five minutes to chew up a salad nibble on a biscuit type of a thing lots of non-white people where you, you rip in running you don't have time you have to commute and do all this they make it really difficult they make it difficult to cook make it difficult to access quality food so it just becomes hey let's just get McDonald's eat in front of the television that's another component of it uh, it's food is not really valued right and nobody slaved over a kitchen if we went to McDonald's nobody slaved over a kitchen or anything so this is not an event us uh, sitting down to have oh Gus T's cheddar biscuits you know everybody shut up and you know let's turn the candles on and all this you know we got cheeseburgers you know whatever so we eat in front of the television and all the rest of it all of that in my view all of that just contributes and there's many more factors but I mean how much time do we have all of that just contributes to food not being valued. I'm not really that mindful about what I'm eating as long as it tastes good. And I mean, hey, McDonald's can make food that tastes good. If you're not really paying attention to it, they put enough sugar in it, enough salt in it. Chicken nuggets taste good. Apple pie tastes good from McDonald's. She, uh, they have uh, chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate chip cookies taste good. They have things that taste good at McDonald's. It's not good for you. It's not quality food. But if you're not paying attention to all of that, and that's what you're accustomed to. That's what we grew up eating. That's what I see mom and dad eat. They're rushing, ripping and running on lunch or getting home, tired from work. Just, hey, let's order a pizza or whatever it is. Oh, okay. We sit around, watch television, see what happened on Stranger Things or whatever it is, eat our fries and all that. If that's what the ritual is, well, then yeah that will probably be replicated and a lot of people that's what they get in their mind in terms of what's supposed to happen when it's time to eat we sit and watch you know something mild because I now I'm really not paying attention to my food I'm watching the screen I'm not looking at my fork I'm not looking at my plate I'm just shoving whatever it is in my mouth that seems to taste pretty good and I can smile and mindlessly consume on both levels white supremacy television and white supremacy food all at the same time destroy your body and destroy your brain computer uh, you come in my view combating all of that is really valuing food like shopping together you shop so they can see you go into the store and getting things and asking them what do you want to eat what meals do you like well you all can talk about you know what are we gonna cook together not just what do you want to eat what do we want to cook cheddar biscuits 
all of that so it can make the whole shopping experience a lot more fun as opposed to just going to shopping. No, put that back. No, put that back. No, put that back. We're already thinking. We already got all this together. We're already thinking about meals that we might want to prepare and what ingredients we need. We got the recipe. Pull that up on your phone. Boom, boom, and knock that. That can make the shopping experience much better. Whole different value to shopping, getting food, cooking the food, putting the meal together. Just a lot of that just depends on what what is your ritual, what's your experience around eating, what what images and actions pop into your head when you get hungry or when you think of food does that entail oh i go on my phone DoorDash, and you know pull up the menu that's what i think about that's what i'm accustomed to we ate out a lot you know especially during the rona we just ate out a lot is that it or is it let me go to the refrigerator see what you know i'm gonna whip up you know turn on the kitchen lights you know grab my apron make sure the kitchen is is that what you think you know it just what am I accustomed to? What did we grow up with? Like I said, I did not grow up in a veggie plant-based household at all, not even close to it. So, you know, that's, and I'm sure that's the case for a lot of people, but as you heard in the clip, that can change. Uh, and you, it can change and you can enjoy, uh, the cooking experience, just being able to put your hands, uh, on food and to know exactly what goes into these cheddar biscuits like what ingredients exactly and to be able to control for everything like to really get in and enjoy that experience and enjoy that experience with your children Ah, spectacular and doing that that ends up being a lifelong how shall I say experience lesson that's what your children will think about I know so many people I hope maybe we'll have some folks who dial in but they will talk about that, those experiences being in the kitchen with their parents, relatives, cooking, preparing foods, pies, things of that nature. A lot of people have those experiences around the so-called horror days. Unfortunately, for most of us, it's around bad food. Like it could t- I just said I have pumpkin pie waiting for Gus T. As soon as we get off the air slice it up let's do it whipped cream and everything but it is all vegan uh, plant-based no crazy uh ingredients like i said all the preservatives and everything you can you can have all of those baking experiences uh we had sweet potato pie all the or two of the retreats you can have all of that just take it doesn't have to have all the crazy egg and all the crazy uh sugar and everything just a few adapt uh, adaptions adaptations to make it a little bit healthier so we don't all have heart disease diabetes kidney failure all the chadwick bozeman just a few adjustments uh, and a few new recipes that's one of the things for people you can check my facebook page i am not like my nature is not at all like uh, pictures, pictures of myself or pictures of what i'm doing where i'm hanging out at and you know that's not me at all the only reason I started taking pictures of the foods that I was cooking and eating was to try to encourage more people for this whole reason we're doing the broadcast this evening eat better what is it eat well use logic eating correctly is path the universal man universal woman I say, hey you can eat really well it's no excuses let me post what I eat on a regular basis so people can see like oh okay you can be vegan plant based that does not mean that you have to suffer that doesn't mean that you have to miss out and you know you just eat steamed vegetables and steamed rice uh, for every meal not, I did have uh, steamed broccoli in the soup today but I mean it was cheddar broccoli soup that was amazing to compliment the cheddar biscuits. Uh, but that's why and I will get that picture posted so people can see what all that looks like. But that's why I posted it. You can see like you can have amazing things so that you can be you will be excited. You and your offspring will be excited about mealtime. And you'll be like, wow, this is so much better than McDonald's. Like, oh, I will turn my nose up. And that's why I said you can get it to where your child. I've seen it. They'll just go and kick it. They're going to McDonald's to hang out in the parking lot. Like, oh, okay, let's go hang out. Oh, God, I'm not eating a quarter. Please, we got 
cheddar biscuits at home. I'm good. <laughs> like, that's how they will function. Like, we can kick it, let's talk, whatever, whatever. I'm not eating anything in there. I don't even know if I want a cup of water from in there. Like, ooh, I can't even believe you all are. Either get that away from me. Touch me with the front. Like, that's the way that they'll function. Like, we can talk and all that. I've seen that. All it takes is being consistent. And you got to have excellent offerings at home. It cannot just be, uh, I don't want you to eat at McDonald's. We've been eating at McDonald's for the past 12 years, first 12 years of your life. Uh, but, you know, I've been rethinking it. And, yes, year of the Rona, no more McDonald's. Uh, what does Mr. Fuller say is compensation. Okay, so you're going to take the big, the quarter pounder out of my hand, right? You're going to take the Big Mac out of my hand. What's going to be there to replace it with? That means you got to cook. If you don't cook, because I know for a lot of folks, I didn't cook before. I said that I'm not, you know, casting judgment. I didn't do a whole lot of cooking myself. And it wasn't even that long ago. It was cows that said, man, Gus just said he made a pumpkin pie and cheddar, like, that fool said not that long ago that he hated cooking and would not, you know, stand over a sink and all that. I absolutely did say that. But I would not have had cheddar biscuits today if I didn't cook. I wouldn't have pumpkin pie today if I didn't cook. Wouldn't have even known that salted caramel pecan cinnamon rolls exist if I didn't cook, that was motivation enough. Like, oh, wow. Like I could have all of these things, even though they are not at the grocery store and they are not at McDonald's, but I could have all of these things and I can stay in my house and have them sign me up for it. Let's do it. Just cook a little bit. And really, it's no excuse. Like they have ton. And I mean, it's more YouTube videos than you could imagine on cooking anything i think they got a video for the cheddar biscuits uh i didn't look at i just looked at the recipe but i think there's a video for vegan cheddar biscuits but they have videos for everything they have apps you can go on your phone and find anything they have uh, and it's specific they have apps and recipes and vlogs and youtube videos that will not just be oh i'm vegan let me get recipes for macaroni and cheese or pesto or alfredo sauce uh, but they do have all that but it'll be specific meaning oh i'm a parent what are vegan meals for children they'll have whole pages for that <clears throat> i can even get you on a start those vegan cheddar biscuits that would definitely be a starter i think children would eat those uh the carrot hot dogs we've had those at every retreat they have been a smash hit every time children would devour those and i think if you you probably could have some children if they're young enough they wouldn't even know the difference between a carrot hot dog and a regular hot dog if you cook it correctly in a season they wouldn't even know just ah, it's a hot dog just, yeah. and they would transition right off of it and not even remember that they used to eat pork and you know all the rest of that um but they have uh at cookbooks apps websites blogs i'm sure eventually i guess if we all get the vaccine or if the rona ever leaves us alone they'll have cooking classes again they have all of that where you can go and figure out like at least you know 20 re even if you don't pick out those recipes you can take the foods that you already prepare unless you just sit around and eat like country ham i hope we don't have too many people that that's like you're ready you just eat you know like ground beef steak country hand if you do no judgment i used to eat 7-eleven hot dogs all the time so no judgment just you know trying to do better but unless that's the type of diet that you eat now you can just transfer and get you know some non-dairy milk uh get non-dairy butter and easily they have you know fake uh the fake ground beef and and all the rest of it and easily make modifications to the recipes that you already prepare and so you can just transition your family at home and just do more cooking and look for new recipes have it so that your children are excited uh, about mealtime and what are we going to be checking out you can have them looking for recipes and helping you out in the kitchen i know that's another one some of the parents said having them in the kitchen with you preparing get their hands in it most of the children that i've been around they love to get their hands dirty and anything like chocolate chip cookies and stuff like that, they love i don't know any children that you know dislike chocolate chip cookies knowing that that's the payoff and that's a quick one too you can get chocolate chip cookies made in like 25 minutes so 
and I can make a mess. Like <laughs> I could get my hands messy for a minute and rah, mess the batter up or whatever. And we get chocolate chip cookies at the end. Sign me up. Most children, they're going to be down. So, I mean, get them in the kitchen with you. You're getting to spend time with your offspring. You can talk to them about the importance of quality eating. One thing I would do also is two, 2021. They have so many videos and different projects. Uh, what the health that's where that's how I found uh, Dr. Ruby Lathan been on the program many times she's right there uh, what is it Super Size me that's an older one if we're talking about McDonald's specifically uh, they have so many uh, I forgot it's a new one talking about athletes uh, who are vegan who, uh, like professional athletes like prof- NFL football players and all the rest of it uh, who are plant based and still playing at a phenomenal level uh, and you know haven't seen any loss in their performance or muscle mass or anything else in fact reported rave results from switching to a plant-based diet so show your children get them some of that material uh, in terms of books have them do some uh, research on their own and when I say have them do some research on their own phenomenal sit down and watch what the hell watch supersize me take notes talk about it or any other projects that you find online it's tons of these types of films but also do some research talk to your family members especially if they have like grandparents aunts uncles ask them about their health ask them about their diet right because it might be if they have other vegan uh grandparents and aunts and uncles and everything your job is even easier now you have some other people that can come in and give the same message but what's probably going to be the case, I know it was for me, you'll have other relatives who are eating bad food. They're going to McDonald's and all of that. Oh, okay, great. You go to McDonald's. What do you eat? Quarter pounder. Oh, dad, he's such a coon. He won't let me get quarter pounder. Man, I used to get, or they used to let us get quarter pounders and I love them. We got pictures of us all together with Ronald McDonald. Now we won't go. He's been listening to some stupid radio program. We can't listen to it anymore. We can't go to McDonald's and I hate it. He's got us eating at home every day and all this. Oh, but you do go to McDonald's, granddad? Oh, okay. Great. Are you are you healthy? Like do you have to Oh, you you have to take pills? Oh, how many pills? Do you, and then, ask questions. That's what we normally recommend, right? Stay in the question lane. Do some research. If they have family members, particularly older family members, ask them about their health. What do you eat? Wow, how many pills do you have to take every day? How much money does that cost? Do you feel good? Are you, you know, does the doctor tell you that you have to lose weight or anything? Do they tell you anything about your diet? Do they tell you that you're eating, you know, the right foods? Do they tell you anything? Ask and ask and ask and see. Do you notice anything? The people that eat at McDonald's, do they seem like they're doing, you know, okay? Or do they seem like they're having any problems? Or what have you. See if you find any other people. Compare that. If you do have people in your family, they're vegan. They eat veggies, plants, organic mostly, that type of thing. Compare their health. Compare their body type, right? Do they look like they're healthy and fit, all that? Compare that to the other folks. And just, you know, let their brain computer do the math. But encourage them to do some research. If if you're transitioning, which is what it sounds like this person was talking about, if you're trying to transition your children, I can't emphasize enough, you have to be exceptional with what you're eating, what you're cooking, what foods you allow in the house. I would say no eating out at all. If you are going to eat out, it's certainly not McDonald's. It's going to be quality food and what have you. Uh, but also, you can talk to them about food, talk to them about what you used to eat, why you used to eat th- eat those foods, why you're making these changes. Just talk to them. Try to give them information you know, about food and encourage them. Ask questions. Pay attention. Be observant to the folks around you, especially older people. Pay attention because food is one of those. You might not see it today. You might be able to get away with it. You know, you might be able to go and get some chicken nuggets today. No big deal. Food is one of those eating bad food, especially eating bad food on a regular basis. That might be one of those where you might have to pay attention for a while to see what happens when you eat bad food on a regular basis. Like I said before, that bad food has a lot of addictive properties. So it's probably not going to be a Oh, I just have this once in a while. Most of the people that I know that eat the the bad food, it's not a once in a while thing. It's a pretty 
regular thing. If you like blizzards, it's always a good time for a blizzard. If you like chicken nuggets, chicken nuggets always sounds better than having to go and tinker around in the kitchen for an hour and a half to get something that still might not taste as good as a chicken nugget. I guess if if I could give one more tidbit, I do know a lot of people feel like they don't have a lot of confidence in the kitchen to like throw down and make something better than a chicken nugget. That's why a lot of people go to McDonald's. It's the same thing as counter racism practice. Like I said, it's really 2021 is really no excuse for anybody being bad at cooking. Like I'm not saying you have to be like a five star gourmet chef. You can make every type of souffle and all that. I'm not saying that at all, but I am saying like, man, if you can read, we go on YouTube and watch every kind of goofy video, you know, kangaroo punch the man in the groin and all the rest of it. Like, man, you can invest 10 minutes in a YouTube video on cooking a little healthier for yourself and others. And it's tons. It's YouTube videos with black people, Asian. If you don't like dark black people, fine. It's YouTube videos with so-called high yellow black people. You don't like high yellow black people, fine. It's YouTube videos with crystal black black people. You don't like black people, fine. It's YouTube videos with non-black, non-white people. All doing vegan cooking and a variety of different meals. And it's books at the library. It's apps on your phone. It's tons of resources. I post recipes like I shared recipes at the Richard Lifestyle. It's no excuse to be bad. A lot of it would just be try it again. Try it again. I made French fries uh, like sometime this year. Uh, at, like from scratch, French fries at home. They were amazing. I posted pictures of them. They were like some of the best French fries. Uh, at way better than McDonald's. Uh, and... When I got the recipe from a non-white person, she said that she had to tinker with the recipe. It took her about three weeks of trying it out to get it perfected. That is the case, just like with counter-racism. You don't always say exactly the perfect thing every time. You might have to go back and make changes, figure out like, oh, I made an error. This is, it shouldn't be this. It should be this. This is actually better. This is an improvement. Same thing will happen with cooking, especially if you don't have a lot of experience you just get in and try and you get better. And especially if you're cooking with your offspring, we are still learning. Hopefully it will be edible when we get to the end of it. We can enjoy and then we'll try it again and do better. Anywho, uh, <clears throat> I don't have children, but these are things that I think might help. Uh, I know I've talked to some folks, non-white people who <clears throat> they didn't grow up eating at McDonald's. Their parents didn't cook. Uh, excuse me, their parents didn't do the, you know, let's go to McDonald's and order Pizza Hut, you know, every other day and that type of thing. And they, th- we cooked and cooked well. <laughs> that seems to be something that sticks out also. The people who, you know, they didn't do the McDonald's like they had parents who cooked and parents who cooked well. Uh, and so they kind of turned their nose up at McDonald's, which is where I am now. Like, it's nothing that I would want from McDonald's. Like, did you hear me? I had cheddar biscuits today and the salted pecan cinnamon rolls like what does mcdonald's have that can you know get out of here uh that's easy to achieve you just have to re- be willing to put the time and energy and it really like i said valuing food valuing the shopping to get you know the ingredients and thinking about all the great things that we're going to cook you, i guess you can't get the stuff delivered but you know valuing food in that capacity valuing cooking and not just thinking about cooking and dirty dishes and having to sweat over the hot stove and burn my hands on a pie and all the rest of it is hey i'm controlling the ingredients uh we can do this together i mean we are at home it's not like we're out at the mcdonald's kitchen at a deep fryer or something so you can have music on and relax get some of those comfortable rugs and make it a really you know enjoyable experience and they have tons of meals even if that's you i know some people say that hey hey, i work i have a lot of responsibilities i can't be slavering over a stove for five hours a day uh to cook something no problem they have tons of because i said the same thing they have tons of one pot recipes that are 30 minutes or less I think for most of us, it would take about 30 minutes to drive to McDonald's and pick out the menu, all that, get back home. So 30 minutes, one pot, not tons of dishes and dirty up the whole kitchen. 30 minutes, one pot, bam. 
uh, crock pot. If you really don't like cooking, you can get a crock pot. They are super cheap, cheaper than a microwave. Literally, you can dump all the ingredients in in the morning on your way to work. Turn it on low. Eight hours later, you come home. Everything is done. Get a bowl and eat. And they have ton, like literally whole pages. I just posted. I made uh, butternut squash, sweet potato curry. Literally, you dump everything in the crock pot. I did it on four hours the first time I made it, four hours on high. The next time I did it on uh, eight hours on low. It was superb. Like, oh my God, Woo. might make it again uh, sometime soon. But And they have tons of recipes like that where you can eat really well. You do not have to slave and sweat all day in the kitchen. It can taste way better than anything at McDonald's and be really healthy and laying a foundation uh, if you have young children or younger children whatever it is laying a foundation for a lifetime for them to say wow we used to make this like man mom and dad we'd be in the kitchen and listening to Neely Fuller Jr. or Dr. Wellson talking about justice and oh we used to make this curry it's so good tasty and I feel better I guess I'll end with that then we'll see if we got suggestions for listeners maybe we got some parents who've done A plus work they haven't just been talking it they have walked the walk in terms of getting their children out of McDonald's man as ugly as this year has been like every day it's just bad news this and bad news that and uh quality eating like literally I was talking to B in Toronto one time made my smoothie I've lived off of smoothies uh, this year love my Vitamix used it to make my soup uh, and the ranch dressing get a good blender good blender can do wonders uh, in terms of what you can prepare and all that good stuff but I used it to make the ranch dressing for the salad and used it to make the uh, cheddar broccoli soup which was whew, I made that a bunch of times though uh, but getting food like that I said I, I spoke with B in Toronto I think that was like this spring or maybe early summer and I was having a horrible day she was having a horrible day I went to my Vitamix and I made my watermelon smoothie frozen watermelon smoothie with the ginger lime juice cucumber I literally felt my energy and vitality increase with each gulp I had my cheddar biscuits today. Life felt a little bit better with each nibble. When I get my pumpkin pie slice when all this is over, like, <laughs> that is the way that you want to eat. Not, I go and get chicken nuggets with fat and deep fried grease that they probably haven't changed in five months and preservatives and all this other nonsense and I feel good because it's steeped in sugar and fat and salt and all the rest of it like no I'm eating organic spinach mushrooms fresh made ranch with fresh dill and as I said the cheddar biscuits I'm eating really high quality food with no craziness no chemicals yes I feel a little bit better your body is supposed to feel better when you are nourished well nourished and not starving not I ate I have never ever 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 been in that group of oh I ate my vegan meal and then 15 minutes later I'm starving and need to eat again and oh man when I ate my Big Mac I'd be full for the rest of it that has never been me and we didn't hear any of those complaints at any of our yoga retreats you can eat plant based meals be really satisfied really delicious really really healthy not compromising on any but we'll see if uh, folks have any thoughts to share. Again, all of this because a listener said, man, what can we do to help get our children out of McDonald's? Hopefully this is helpful uh, towards that effort. Uh, folks asked or have been suggesting a lot, man, gosh, you should do a cookbook, which is something I never, ever thought of doing. But if like a counter racist cookbook with like some of what we talked about tonight and some recipes and some of how racism is designed to have us eating poorly and eating McDonald's and not valuing food, not seeing food as the nourishment, which will fuel our ability to replace white supremacy with justice. Mr. Fuller talks have talks about having the will 
and the ability if you are not eating correctly I can almost guarantee you there's going to come a point you're not gonna have the ability to replace white supremacy with justice and it's gonna come way before it should like where you should have lots of vitality and lots of energy to go out and solve this problem and it's not going to be there and we had guests on the program Christopher Everett he said that exactly this year I asked him about the Rona and he said he had to take it seriously because he has health problems diabetes said he weighed 325 pounds he was trying to make a sequel to his film Wilmington on fire white terrorism in North Carolina trying to make a sequel and he couldn't do it because of his health That'll be my stop point in the archives from this summer. The number is 720-716-7300. The code 564-943-POUND. Press star 61 if you would like to participate. Uh, if we have any parents and you figured out, like, hmm, Gus doesn't know what he's talking about, but as a parent, someone who has changed a diaper or a hundred these are some things that we did and got our children up out of the golden arches well absolutely star six one and I will hush let's see folks who are with us if they have any thoughts on the subject uh, color hand up line should be open Looks like I see see at least one hand. I don't know if you're just listening, but did you have commentary? Might just be listening. I'll double back in and check. Let's see. Uh Mo in Dallas. See your hand as well. Did you have commentary, sir? Uh yes, I'm I'm traveling to a, a nice place to talk, so give me like a minute. For sure, for sure. Uh, we'll check back in with Mo and Dallas, our other caller. Uh, not hearing you, so I guess if you're just listening, no problem. If you have commentary, let us know. Uh, we'll be here on Thursday. Whew, excited. Jeffrey Tubin, the run of his life, the people, versus O.J. Simpson. Normal time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Super looking forward. Uh, as for the food component again you can check my uh, Facebook facebook.com forward slash the problem is white people and you can just look at photos and I have lots of uh, food pics pics uh, of things that I've made mostly over this year you'll see some of the stuff from the yoga retreats and all of that again posted only uh, to try to inspire folks to show off uh, plant-based eating I don't know you know what people's uh, conceptions about plant-based eating are what they think it entails uh, but you can enjoy all kinds of eating you do not have to miss out on anything uh, you can have your children totally excited I don't know any children who would not be excited about cinnamon rolls pizza you'll see pizza uh, on my Facebook page I love making pizza I have uh, cheese and everything uh, downstairs to do pizza up uh, pasta made that a number of times like you can do french fries anything anything you can think of lasagna anything you can think of uh, anything that you normally enjoy you can make the same things like I said they have tons of websites that have recipes that are focused uh, for children you can make like uh, veggie versions of like chicken nuggets uh, and the hot dogs that I talked about all kinds of things have hamburgers veggie burgers they have like a billion recipes for veggie burgers so it is really no excuse uh, it really would just be about experimenting in the kitchen uh, and maybe playing around online to you know find some recipes or go go to your library and get some cookbooks and play around and encourage that too experimentation you can play around with produce there are all kinds of fruits and vegetables even getting some of the same fruits and vegetables that you're accustomed to preparing them in new ways <laughs> tons you can even make that a challenge like you can say we're gonna do a whole meal I think uh, at the retreat this summer we did a whole meal around zucchini uh, and try different you know recipes especially if you find fruits and vegetables that your children really like I know when I was uh, younger I loved I'm trying to think like broccoli 
uh, squash, string beans, anything like that. Once you find out, like, oh, they really like this, let's not just do this the same way every time. Let's try and see if we can find some other recipes that they really like, or even encourage them. See if you can check out some other recipes where you might like, you know, broccoli in a different way. A lot of times, at least if you know you like broccoli normally, you might be willing to try it. And especially if we cooked it together, you might even be more willing to try it. Let's see, uh, there are folks that are with us with a hand up. I know Mo in Dallas said he needed a moment. Uh, our other caller, if you all are with us with thoughts, feel free. Uh, if not, let's see. Can I hear it? Mo in Dallas. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, greetings, guys. Uh, greetings, listeners and callers. Thank you for, getting, thank you for the program, guys. Um, well, uh, I am an attempted parent. And actually, I went grocery shopping today. Um, I've I've um, had you know I've been a custodial caregiver for my daughter since she was two, but she's lived with me her entire life. It's just um, at the age of two, um, I um, received uh, full custodial guardianship. Um, and uh, like when I do go grocery shopping, I make sure to uh, bring her along and um, have her participate in shopping. Um, and and I do it to just ensure she will eat what we pick up and she approves of what we pick up, you know? And I think um, in, in a way it teaches her how to shop and she actually understands, uh, you know, um, how much things cost. She doesn't really know how I, how I inquire the income just yet, uh, but she knows that I can afford it, you know? And, and we actually go over things that we can't afford. You know, we, we have like a budget, you know, victims of racism, white supremacy. So, um, and as far as McDonald's, she was crazy about McDonald's. So, uh, when she, um, visits her, well, I'm not going to put it on her other parent, but me too. Um, I would get her, you know, quick meals uh, when I was more confused about racism. Um, but especially when she hung out with her, you know, other parent, um, like that was a, a go-to, you know, the the kids' meal, and she was wild about the chicken nuggets. So to uh, deter her from the nuggets, um, I showed her uh, videos on how the nuggets were made, and this was back when the uh, the pink paste, a uh, pink gelatin video. I don't know what that stuff was, but they were making the nuggets out of something pink and not chicken, and she was like, "What is that?" And I was like, uh, and she watched it go in the machine and, and come out a nugget. And she was like, that's not uh, chicken. And I was like, yeah, I didn't know it was food either. Um, yeah, but that's not food. So um, she understands what is food and what isn't food. Um, and uh, now she's an, she's an advocate uh, uh, for, for not McDonald's. Um, funny story, my son, who lives with his mother, um, has a, a male cousin and he has a strict diet, believe it or not, of chicken nuggets and French fries. I don't know how he negotiated this diet being a, I think he was seven year old, seven years old at the time. But, um, my son, um, uh, used to cohabitate with a young man in the same room. So when I picked up my son, I had no problem with picking up the other Young man, I think his dad lives in like North Carolina or Virginia or somewhere or back east. Um, and uh, his mom explained to me his diet before we left. And I definitely told her, I was like, before I leave with the child, we're not going there. He's not getting that today. Um, and I was like, you, you have the option to, for me to, you know, to re- let your child remain here. Or if he comes with me, he's going to eat what I give him. She's like, well, what are you going to eat? And I was like, we haven't worked it out yet. Um, he had a great time, and he under and he ate food that day. Uh, but knowing his diet, it really spoke to the uh, build of the child. He was a he was a little boy, but um, like my son, it it wasn't like my son was 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 bigger than him. Is the confusing part? They looked around the same size. But my child was more, I guess, dense, you know, like I had a more solid son. I, I don't 
Like if if you like patted my son's chest, it would sound like filled. And if you patted him on the chest, it like echoed. And um, it really concerned me. So a lot of and if his if his diet was truly uh, and that's what they told me. If it was truly chicken nuggets and French fries for as long as whatever, because that's all he would eat. It it does a number on the child's health, especially well on their growth, if you ask me, or at least their body density, um, especially um, between ages of I guess four and seven. Um, that's all I have for now in my life. Mm. Wow, much obliged, Mo in Dallas. Uh, that is so important. I had that written down. Glad we got to hear from folks who actually have children, uh, who your children are hanging out with is huge because you can be exemplary. You know, we have lots of fruits and vegetables do exactly what Mo and Dallas said. I take my child with me and we go to the store and they're part of it. Like we get to see how much the food costs. And that way I know we're picking food that they will eat. Right. So everybody's happy with the food choices and all that stuff. Outstanding. You could be getting A pluses in all of that. You all come home and cook together and blah, 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 eat together. No television is on. Great kale and spinach and all of it. They love it. Awesome. And then they go to the friend's house. Everything is in the toilet. Like I have, I have seen that. And in fact, this time of year, especially because now you go to the friend's house. Oh, my God. They have got the Christmas tree and eggnog and Christmas cookies and Christmas ice cream and cakes. And oh, pfft, lose your mind. So, yeah, I, I had that right on my list. Uh, you have to be very mindful about your children's friends. Uh, I've we talked before about if they have white friends, right? That should just eh, not go into their house. Don't care about what they eat, blah, blah, blah. Lots of, of hazards. But I mean, hey, it's lots of victims. That is a part of their victimization where they have horrible diets filled with poison and chemicals and additives and all that. And that's, you know, what their children are going to eat. So you go over their house, they're going to be polite. You know, we're having pizza on the McDonald's. You want to go like, oh, so. I was, I don't, I, it would be maybe the type of thing where in turn, Mo and Dallas, you're a responsible parent. You go visit, you check these folks out. You let them know, uh, my child, you know, we have very, uh, I wouldn't say strict. We just, we have, uh, we're concerned about our child's diet. So you can just make sure that they don't have any, we have uh, a set diet. Yes. We there we diet. go. Love it. He has a set diet. So we, we, Really grateful if you could just help out with that. Uh, we don't do any eating out and blah, 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 whatever it is. Uh, if it's you no know, meat or whatever you have in place, but just you can let them know that. And you can check out to see that they have Cheetos all over. It might be the type of thing where I don't even want you going over there. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, then I have to think about, God, did they slip any, you know, poison them? Because I'm, that stuff is addictive. That's one of the reasons how you can end up with a child who only eats french fries and chicken nuggets now i just said at the beginning of the week i don't have offspring but i've been around children and i worked in the school systems i've been around like a lot of children and i said man you've got like generations really at first i said singular you got a whole generation and i stopped and said, wait a minute i was one of the like man you've got generations of children uh who have grown up like exclusively eating chicken nuggets and i said and it was like oh man you exaggerate. That's not true. They don't have that. That's man. I don't. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> chicken nuggets are real popular. Like I see chicken nuggets advertised like all the time. Chicken tenders, chicken nuggets, all of it. Like I said, I don't see bok choy and broccoli and the rest of it advertised. I have seen lots of children. I was like that. Where that's the regular rotation. Chicken nuggets. <laughs> Not veggies, not beets, not broccoli, chicken nuggets, French fries, and chicken nuggets. That's a that's a uh, meal. You can go to McDonald's, right? That's a meal. That's a lot of the fast food places. Like that's a combo item. You get a drink and probably a toy of some sort, maybe a chocolate chip cookie and chicken nuggets. 
French fries. Uh, in fact, I heard a parent who said that she said she was with another mom, a black mom, victim of racism, and she said, uh, "Oh my goodness, I gotta, I gotta get my child something to eat." She had a little girl. She, said, I gotta get her something to eat. Here, just go in there and get her a bunch of of chicken nuggets. A bunch. Now, I don't know how much a bunch is because they got the twenty piece and they got the five piece. So I don't, know, you know, I don't know what a bunch is, but. Uh, <laughs> nothing about that is quick because I got that on my list too about portion control like I don't think that should ever be said like especially for I mean really for any child I wouldn't care if you had like a 16 year old it should not be uh, my 16 year old needs a meal go get them a bunch of I mean eh, like no that just no portion control portion the food is addictive. I keep saying that it's addictive, both in the long term. So you just keep. They get you. They hook you at five and ten, to where all I eat is chicken nuggets and French fries. All I eat is chicken nuggets and fries. To where you become an adult and you just chicken nuggets and fries, chicken nuggets and fries, chicken and fries. That's what you eat on a regular basis. And they get you for twenty, thirty, forty years, and then you know, uh, heart problems and high blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes, and all the rest of it with eating bad food for all those years. Um, so not doing that, being mindful of who your children are hanging out with, portion control, all of that spectacular, and trying to be on the same page. I think we said like for years, Dr. Welsing said, play around with sex. The joke is on the offspring. Is so many things to discuss before we have children like what's our child's academic plan going to be what's our child's nutritional plan going to be are we in sync about that what's our nutritional plan going to be like what are we eating as attempted mother attempted father like is all of that and like is so much uh, to discuss before you know hitting the bedroom there's so many things that can just be massive problems just the food is one of many that is certainly one you don't want to wait until your child is 13 or 14 and say wow like you need to do some more thinking about you know what how we're nourishing our child <laughs> like that is way late in the game that's how they get lots of us that's how you end up with lots of people who are 30 and 40 years old and trying to get their diet together because a lot of this started when they're young so it's really it's one of the best things that you can do for your child to try to nip a lot of that uh, obesity and just <laughs> diet related health problems nip that stuff in the bud like really instill high quality eating habits and a high value for food fruits veggies at a very young age we had someone they wrote it was one of the times we had Dr. Lathan on. They wrote a comment. And they said, man, indigenous people all over the world, they ate, they hunted, they ate fish, buffalo, bison, all kinds of meat products. That's that's crazy talk. They said, uh, eating plant-based meals does not count on racism. Oh, no camp, Gus, talking crazy. And I said, hmm, those comparisons uh, the diet that we eat now, chicken nuggets, is in no way, shape, form comparable to someone going out and fishing and catching a salmon. And if you think it is, whoo, we are all still learning. So you should go and get some books on nutrition, diet. Don't start with Nutricide. We read that one. But wow. Uh I will hear that type of argument where people say, well, they ate fruits. and Number one, we're also ignoring those folks ate a lot of fruits and vegetables. If we're talking about so-called indigenous populations anywhere in the world. They ate lots of fresh fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, in addition to whatever meat products they did their fishing, hunting, but lots of fruits grains the young fella Mo in Dallas just talked about he didn't say I had chicken nuggets and french fries and then supplemented that with some carrots and beets and okra and <laughs> watermelon that we he didn't say that he said chicken nuggets and french fries and I've seen lots 
and lots of that. But that notwithstanding, it's not comparison at all. I said the white supremacist industrialized meat complex or meat industry, white supremacy meat industry, that consumption or, or consuming meat products that are coming from that system is totally different than you going out and hunting deer or if you have chicken and you raise them you eat the eggs from them or whatever it is that's not the same at all and again they have documentaries and blah blah blah. they go into a lot more detail uh, about that and the quantity i just talked about portion control man if you think the amount of food whatever it is if we're talking uh poultry beef fish the quantity of meat that those individuals would be eating as opposed to what you can get now just going to Costco where you can go get a 50 pound rack of ribs for 50 cents or go to McDonald's and get a 20 piece chicken nugget or what is the new thing they got uh, two Whoppers at Burger King for $5 or something absurd like no it is not the same at all in terms of portion in in terms of quantity and in terms of the other fruits, vegetables, nuts, and grains that would supplement their diet that is largely absent from our current diet. So it is a total false comparison. I talk about that all the time. People make uh, comparisons. You have to uh, investigate to make sure that it is the same. Uh, Again, I am plant-based. That's what I advocate. But again, it would still have to be lots of fruits, vegetables, whole foods, not preservatives, certainly not McDonald's. I know they have salads and things at McDonald's now. Like you can get um, like apple slices, apple wedges or whatever. And I think they even have like the veggie burgers or the impossible burgers at uh, McDonald's, maybe Burger King, some of those places. I guess that's like maybe a pull, like slightly better. But I mean, even that would be like, I'm not going to have too many more of these. Like... If I want a salad, McDonald's is, I just had a salad. Way better than what they have at uh, McDonald's. I made the ranch. I don't have to be worried about what preservatives and craziness they have in the ranch. I don't have to worry about how long this salad has been sitting. I just made this salad today. In fact, I made this salad literally about 10 minutes before I ate it. I'm pretty sure they don't have salads that are that fresh at McDonald's. I haven't eaten there in a long time, so I might be wrong. Uh, let's see. Uh, other person who had a hand up, just double check and see if they had comments here they wanted to share, or anybody else, comments, thoughts? May I be heard? Yes, sir. Uh, greetings, Gus. Greetings, calls, and listeners. Um, it's a, it's a great topic. I'm really glad you're bringing this up because I'm working on these exact same things with my, um, attempted children, um, attempted offspring. And the difficult part is for me has been getting them off sweets. Um, it's, it's the bad sweets, you know, they, they want those, those power pack sugar things like those. I don't know if you remember back in the days we had those things called nerds where there were little packets of colorized rocks that were just sugar, basically, and, and, and all these other, like, desserts. And I'm trying my best to, to um, manage that. But my eldest is 14, my youngest is 6, and um, my eldest lives with me. Um, and I've, I've been good with him at home, but outside, <laughs> you know, Dunkin' Donuts, um, the wing spot, like it's almost like he needs to, he feels like he needs to fill that void. And it's been a little difficult. The thing that I've noticed that helps is when he's actually doing sports. Um, that's been the most constructive aspect of it is when he's doing sports and he starts realizing like, oh, I can't really eat this because I won't be able to run as fast and compete with the other children effectively, oh, I'm, I'm just not going to eat it. And that's 
the dynamic that really works so far that, that has been um, that I've been trying to gear him towards. And this is with soccer and with tennis, where he's starting to notice that yeah, it affects his um, overall um, performance, and that's that's one of the things I'm trying to get across. One thing you did mention, I pardon, I think I'm going to have to do is um, introduce him to those documentaries. Um, um, what the food and um, all these other documentaries, um, super, super size me, I think is excellent. And uh, as well as a host of others, but I think those two are, are really important. I think that's one of the things. Um, and one suggestion that I have uh, as well is during dinner time, just turning off devices, like putting them to the side, television, phones, and actually have conversations and ask about how was your day and all these other things. You know, um, currently I bought another cooking book and I'm just trying to cook with my son during the day. That's the biggest thing since I've been lucky enough to work from home. You know, um, um, the, the book you mentioned, I, I was just curious about, um, wh- when did this come out? This book about... Um, uh, I believe it was about the uh, you are what your grandchildren eat, I believe, or your grandparents eat. I never heard of that. Uh, it came out, let's see, recently, very recently. Let's see. And let's see, I'm looking on Amazon just to get a publication date. So this came out in. 2019 yeah 2019 that's what I thought just last year um, the audio clip that I played was from the end of last year like I said they were in Seattle Um, Judith Finlayson and Kent Thornburg uh, where they talk about that it has such an impact like if if you've been eating McDonald's even what your children talked about craving the sweet it's addictive keep saying that it is addictive and everything that you mentioned all the sugar in the Dunkin Do- I used to love Dunkin Donuts Woof. the uh, right. donut Been holes here. the chocolate glazed ones like oh man oh man mm-hmm. Dunkin Donuts I wasn't a big wing fan but McDonald's chicken nuggets all that but like yeah, if you've been eating all of that and it's got all the salt, it's got all the addictive qualities and it. it's got all that sugar in it, like it's advertised. Who doesn't want a donut? Like, ah, let me get five of those. Um, and if you've been eating it, it's really hard. Like, and particularly if you're a child, because like you're not developed. Like, that's the other thing, too. Like children, like all the stuff is bad for everybody. It's bad for adults. It's bad for everybody. But for your child you're still developing. So your brain computer is not fully developed. Like your body is not fully developed. So all those chemicals and everything hitting your body at 10 and 12, Mm -hmm. like, Oh, that is like total overdrive. That probably is greatly contributing. When they talk about a lot of these folks have attention deficit disorder and all that, uh, I've been poisoned with all this right. food and now I'm having a difficult time thinking. Yes, that probably is a great deal of it because I even know a whole lot of, I won't say adults, but older people who ate the same, exactly the type of food you just mentioned, the wings and ribs and the donuts and blah, blah, blah. And they said they would get crazy headaches, just, you know, super, super migraines. Yeah. Stop eating all that. I, I, can I, can I interrupt you? Let's, let's hear it. Let's hear it. No, I, I got to tell you right here, and this is one of the issues that I'm having is um, in, in my household, I'm the one that's the main water drinker. I'm the one that wakes up in the morning and has a warm glass of lemon water. I've understood um, from, uh, I've been lucky enough to have a doctor that was, uh, that did allopath medicine as well. And she suggested in the morning when you wake up, have that water and then have a glass of warm water, or lemon juice, squeeze honey in it if you need to. But this flushes out your system, takes care of some of the salt, takes care of some of the sugar, and allows your digestive system to clear up and boost your energy level and will allow you to go to the bathroom. Nature will call. Um, and I've been a strong advocate of that. And then the, the, the issue I've been having is 
that my household is, is my, my attempted partners, I'm trying to get her to understand this dynamic because it influences and affects our son so much that if, if she doesn't start to turn and get to this stage, that it's going to affect her later on down the line. And I feel like it's a relationship with food that I think has to be nurtured first where you have to change the relationship and take the basis of the food is there to nurture me and I can enjoy it. I can get good food that's tasty and all these other things, but I need to have things that are nourishing. And that's the most difficult part that I've been having is pushing up against that. And sometimes I fall short. Sometimes I end up ordering from, you know, some, some uh, restaurant and, and things of that nature. But it, it's a consistent theme where I've been trying to make sure that our household stays disciplined with what we intake. You know, that it's, it's, a, it's a real tough one. I, got, I tell you, that's, the more, that's more tougher than anything else that I deal with outside. Of, uh, outside. I, I'll, I'll tell you. And I think that if people really look at it, it it's the same in most households. It's sugar and salt are dangerous, extremely dangerous. You know, <laughs> that's all I'm noticing. Uh, you know, you were saying, Gus? Addictive, uh, you know, those... And I, what did I say at the beginning about the preservatives, right? A lot of times, too, with the foods that we love, the junk food, the junk of it is they they cut all the corners, right? Like I said, they we don't we don't need to put a hundred percent Parmesan cheese in it. Maybe we put ninety percent Parmesan cheese and then ten percent sawdust. They'll never know, you know. Yeah, so they do all the cutting corners and frequently when they cut all these corners what they do is well just put some extra salt in and they'll never know or put some extra sugar in and they'll never know or put both in and they'll never know and so you just end up with more and more salt more and more sugar and all of that lots of health problems and it can end up one it's addictive I just keep saying that it's addictive it's addictive it's the type of thing where you end up overeating Mm -hmm. and then craving these foods for the rest of your life. They would even have some of the other uh, documentaries about how what we eat impacts our brain and how we think that once you get addicted to eating these bad foods, when you, when your brain sees the symbols like the golden arches, or they talk about uh, not Dunkin' Donut, Krispy Kreme donuts. When the, uh, the hot mm. donut sign is flashing like, oh, my God, people start salivating <laughs> like dogs today. I thought cause I used to be one of those people. But again, with the show, because I know tons of people who say I know older people who say that they so many. Everybody has is addicted to sugar because it's in everything. One. Yes. Get a blender. I tell everybody that if you have a great blender, <laughs> smoothies ice cream you can make so many desserts and use uh fruits uh frozen fruits if you want you know smoothies or ice cream sorbets all that stuff it is spectacular Mm -hmm. that is such a great alternative to just you know doing all the sweets and sugars and cakes and pies and blah 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 uh and you can i have pumpkin pie like you can make a lot of that stuff vegan and you can use they have uh coconut sugar They have mung fruit that you can use as a direct one-to-one replacement for sugar. Uh, They have lots of recipes where you can put substantially less sugar. Uh, Like I made sweet potato pie and I heard it was a black female. She was saying she used to be, you know, eating all the junk food. She said she used to make sweet potato pie this time of year. She would make it with four cups of sugar. If you're not a baker out there. Thank you. Thank, that's what you're supposed to say. That's what you're supposed to say. Jesus, like, <laughs> diabetes, you're going to kill us right now. And she was embarrassed to say it. You know, like, what the hell? Why do you need four cups of sugar in one pie? Now, I think uh, maybe one, and I normally cheat the sugar. The people can tell you what the, I've never had anybody complain about the sweet potato pies that I've made uh, at the retreat or here that I've shared with other people. The max they will have is one cup of sugar, and generally I cheat that. So most of the time, I won't even have one full cup of sugar. I've never had anybody complain, oh, this isn't sweet. I think the uh, pumpkin pie that I made today, max, one cup of sugar, may have been less than that. I normally cheat that. I don't know about that. I would have to let you know, but 
never have complaints uh, about any of the sweets that I do. You can adjust it. That's why I said the cooking, you can have all of that stuff. If they have recipes for donuts. They have tons of them. I'm just, I've been making other things, um, you know, pies and cinnamon rolls, but the, they have the, tons the, the thing, of, I'm sorry? The, no, the thing is that I've noticed, and this is something that I've, I've actually taken account into, is that um, my attempted partner, she has um, uh, her mother um, indulges in a lot of sugar, and uh, they still eat pork and they still eat beef, but they also get and they don't drink enough water. Her and the mother drink water like it's, you know, like once in a while. Oh, since it's there, they'll pull it. And and I'm and I'm feeling even weird talking about it, but I've been talking to both of them about it ever since I met both of them, and I'm telling them, you get migraine headaches all the time. It's because you're not drinking enough water and you're eating foods that are so addictive. What I've noticed, because they did studies on people, of judges, that eat certain foods, and when they ate certain foods and didn't eat lunch at a certain point, depending on the food they ate, it influenced their decisions on the cases they had. Hmm. Meaningly, they weren't able to be patient enough to actually make proper decisions so if you're eating burgers and sweet foods and all these things and you usually have it at one o'clock and then you don't have it at one o'clock your body's reacting to it and when your body reacts to that the two brains there's the one in the gut and there's one in your head and that that one in the gut is a lot more powerful than i think people realize and that's what i'm trying to learn more about again i'm, I'm not perfect at this at all do not get me wrong i'm not perfect at this at all but I'm learning about this and I'm just trying to encourage my household to come along with the journey because I do, this is not about just our, my legacy. This is about our whole family, family lineage, like just going along based on exactly what, what um, that, that excerpt that you spoke about. But the fact that they get migraines and they don't drink water and they eat beef and they eat pork and they eat high levels of sugar, I'm just like... <laughs> You know, and this is not something that I'm saying just to you. I've said this to them both over and over and over again. It's, it's, a, it's a consistent thing where I feel like that's where the biggest fight is. You know, we could talk about all the, you know, Second Amendment rights and us as black people having guns and blah, blah, blah. But too many of us are going off by the fork than we are by anything else. And I, I'm just, it's hard work. <laughs> it's hard work. I got to tell you that. It's not a joke. Not a joke. You know? Can I add to that? Uh, Mo in Dallas? Yes, sir. Uh, other caller. I myself, uh, I, uh, this is going to be a interesting story. I wear glasses, okay? And um, I used to suffer from from serious, serious headaches, like just migraines. And, it would, and they would just, I'd have to lay down. And, and, and kind of just turn off the lights and stuff to kind of calm myself. And and I increased my water intake. And since I have increased my water intake, I drink about a liter and a half a day. It's not as much as I should, but it's much more than I was drinking. Um, and since then, uh, like, my headaches have, have, like, they've pretty much been non-existent. Um, I also noticed a change in my attitude that I, I used to be. Um, more impatient or less patient with people. Um, and it's not like I was uh, combative or anything. I just didn't really care uh, as much as I knew I should. And, and I would regret it a lot of times. Uh, so I, I definitely agree that uh, um, um, that you should keep fighting a good fight on um, uh, uh, on advocating for water in your household. Uh, and and uh, what I did, I actually, you know, people have subscriptions, you know, like Netflix and all of this stuff. Uh, I, I uh, went ahead and um, so, uh, got a Nestle's subscription, and I, I get water delivered to the house. Um, and and I and I make it a point, you know, we got to drink this water. They're coming to get the jugs, you know. Uh, and I and I do my part, and and it's and it's and, and, and it's helped my household uh, increase their water consumption. I had to actually explain to them not to give the water to the dog. 
<laughs> <'Cause> dogs okay. <laughs> Serious, like I'm buying this for us, not her. <laughs> but uh, but you know, um, and, and that and that little, you know, and you have like uh, with the with the. I, I don't want to give them a commercial or anything, but they have like you know we got a pretty good cooler. It has the hot water there and uh, the hot water feature, so they can you know make teas and stuff. And and mm-hmm. they have different brands of water, so they can actually select. It's like shopping. Women love to shop, and I don't mean to sound sexist or anything, but it, it, it is something they get to participate in. And, and you know, and, and it could be something that they want. Um, um, also, there are a lot of uh, uh, black-owned water companies, or a few, I can't say a lot, but a few black-owned water companies that you can support. And, and these mm-hmm. uh, these companies have uh, been known. I think uh, one is Moon Jug out of Atlanta, Moon Jug Water. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and this water has uh, been known to, you know, uh, impact people that are on like dialysis you know they have to go to like dialysis every other day and um on weekends you know they have to wait two days so that sunday is a really tough day for people on dialysis after drinking some of this water you know that they actually pulled out of springs and stuff the dialysis patients you know they're they're spry you know the dudes are getting back with their wives you know so i'm the man around here so it's 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 it there there are things that you can do um and also the uh the the indigenous aspects of the indigenous people, a good point, Gus. This is not the same food. Um, the indigenous people they did not eat meat um, all year round. Uh, they 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 ate meat to supplement during the uh, non harvest season, and um, they also used the entire animal because they understood that it isn't a part of the natural diet. So like you know the bones, the skin everything they would it would consume the entire animal and the interesting thing about these animals these animals you know lived off of the land so mm-hmm. like whatever was in the animals they 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 consumed that they weren't full of chemicals they weren't they weren't full of you know gmos and and red dye number five so um, it, it's like and i i've had an argument with, with people too about their dietary habits and trying to make excuses. Well, the Native Americans ate buffalo, so I can eat a cheeseburger. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make sense. That's all I have. I mean, my can, life. Can, can I say something on that too? I, I really, I have a funny story about that, which is my son, um, Allspring, was getting his hair cut at the barber shop, and my you know, my my partner, me and her were talking about what we were going to eat afterwards, and you know. You know, she made the comment. She was like, well, pork is off the table. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Pork is off the table. So is beef completely. And the barber, while he's cutting my son's hair, is like, well, what's wrong with pork? And I'm like, well, I don't eat pork. It doesn't, doesn't do anything for you. There's nothing nutritional value, nothing coming from it. And there's no need to eat pork. And he goes, well, my grandfather ate pork and he ate pork until he was 95 and you know, he was perfectly fine, and there's nothing wrong with him. And I simply said to him, which is similar to what we're discussing, which is, is the pork that your grandfather ate the same pork that you eat today? And he looked at me and said, no, it's, it's, it's definitely not. I said, well, then why are you telling me to eat pork? <laughs> like, and, you know, it was one of those scenarios where I was just looking at this guy like, man, just and, and uh, what I've noticed, and I don't know if anybody else has gone through this, which is because people know my dietary habits are different and that I'm making changes, I seem to get more attacked for not eating things that everybody else is eating more than me actually going after people and going, telling them, you shouldn't eat this, you shouldn't. That's not what's happening. What's happening is the opposite, which is people are telling me, like, well, you should eat this and you should eat that constantly judging me but i'm trying to figure out saying to myself well you don't look healthier than me so why would i follow what you're eating simple logic why and i've been noticing that trend going on and on and on consistently but i think it's a theme where people feel threatened or feel uncomfortable by their dietary decisions so they feel a need to lash out maybe on some other individual as opposed to dealing with their own quote-unquote issues with with food, their relationship with food, you know, but that, that's a very interesting case. And I will try to 
I do have a filter. I do have a blender. My son uses the blender, which I'm very happy about. And I'm trying to make sure that he he uses the the new cookbook that we have and we could do it together more often. We haven't been as consistent. And that's where, again, it's my fault because I need to make sure that things are going in the right direction when it comes to his eating habits. But um, thank you for that input. Greatly appreciated. Can I add to the pork thing? Moa Dallas. I think it's in Japan, maybe. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but it's a country in Asia. Uh, one of the main meats they consume is pork, you know. Uh, and, like, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm I'm not advocating for pork, but, you know, they, they don't have adverse effects behind the pork that they eat because they're, I've, I've met it. I've worked with a, a Japanese man, or at least a man from Asia, uh, and he was explaining to me they eat the darker animals. Like, or they prefer the darker animals. Like, you know, he's like, black chicken tastes better. Like, chickens that are black, black feathers, black skin, he, he explains to me they taste better and why. Uh, when it comes to the pork, it's the same thing. They they feed their own pigs. You know, they raise their own pigs. They slaughter their own pigs. Uh, they don't they don't scare them before they kill them. You know, it, it's it's a it's an entire process, a ritual, if you would, that goes into the food that they consume. So. Uh, most definitely the pork that your barber is eating is nothing near his grandfather's pork. I'm pretty sure. I don't know how old his grandfather is, but I'm pretty sure there wasn't as many chemicals, as many hormones, as many, you know, growth additives, uh, as many injections when, when your grandfather was a child. And, um, like, and even if they were there, by the time he reached the age he reached, that probably conduced to how soon he did pass, and I'm pretty sure the food that he consumed before, you know, kind of armed himself for the impact of whatever bad foods he was consuming in his later, later time in life. Um, that's all I have. Good point. Folks ate lots more fruits and veggies. They even said that this year since the Rona they said that uh, lots of farmers in the U.S. have had to destroy tons of crops because people don't eat as many fruits and vegetables when they cook at home as opposed to when they eat out. Now that tells you a lot right there. And what did I say? What do you have in your pantry? What food items do you bring into allow into your house? What's in your refrigerator right now? What's in your freezer right now? <laughs> Apparently. Not very many fresh fruits and vegetables because farmers all year, they had tons of pictures of spinach, all that. I didn't see not one where it was, oh, my God, the Lay's potato chip attack factory. They don't know what's going to happen. They got potato chips just stacked up. Nobody's buying potato chips like, man, they just been at home eating fruit that I haven't heard that at all. I told you I heard that woman. She went to the to the uh, Trader Joe's. She was so pitiful and pathetic, said, uh. Do you still have potato chips? She didn't say, do you still have bok choy? Do you still have any carrots? Do it, what did they say? Do you still have apples? That's not what she said. Cheetos, man. Get out of the way. I'm trying to get these pretzels. Addictive? Just keep saying. Just remember, they were taking bets at Tyson. Oh, that's right about the Rona. Man, If you that's why I said, it depends on how old your child is. Now, if I had a four-year-old, I probably wouldn't show him that report. We probably wouldn't watch Super Size Me if I have a four-year-old. We can just kick it. Let's just go get a fruit smoothie. We'll make some vegan chicken nuggets or, you know, whatever. We can, we'll get to that later. But if they're 14, 10, like my man said, they were addicted to the chicken nuggets. He said, well, let's, let's see where the old chicken nugget comes from. Let's, let's go backwards in this process. By the time they're 10, they can see that. The brain computer works. It's like, whoa. That's that's what they're doing for me to get this chicken nugget. Whoa, let me think. I, and I have seen that. I mean, brain computers work. It worked for me. Like, oh man, I don't, I don't want to eat that. I don't want to participate in that. That's logical. COVID nineteen at the chicken processing plant. That would be another one. Whoa, whoa, the Rona got it. Now, 
I have seen a few of those reports for produce facilities where they're going out to get the cherries or whatever it is, but it's been way fewer of those. It's been t- like I have seen numerous meat packing plants closed down because of uh, COVID-19 positive results. I have not seen any produce processing facilities actually shut down because they had so many positive tests. I haven't seen anything like that. So yeah, it's lots of reasons. And again, you could just show that information to your child while you all are eating something or afterwards. Let's not gross out the meal, but after you all are nice and full, you had a great salad and maybe some toasted Brussels sprouts with some pecans and veggie meatloaf i don't like meatloaf but i know we have some listeners they love the veggie meatloaf so you're nice and full satiated maybe got some sweet potato pie for later they're like oh yeah did you see the road well the mcdonald's that got shut down it's a whole lot of that's why i says how much time do we have about why we don't eat at mcdonald's how much do the people that work at mcdonald's get paid the pink slime the black franchise owners like it's it would just be an endless list like how much time do we have how old is the child like uh it shouldn't be an overkill but i mean at least one of those things i think will catch with most people like what they treat black workers like what they put pink slime in the what they pay them what how many workers got the cook? Like one of them is going to like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's get the cookbook and let's get back to cooking something here. We don't need to go to McDonald's or like I said, fine. It could be the hangout spot, but I'm not eating anything here. Like I'm good. Let's see. Star six, one, if folks have any other comments, we have any other parents. If you have a thought about uh, being able to get your child to, turn loose of mcdonald's like i said is so much easier you have to be dissonant we've heard folks talk about if you and your attempted partner are not in sync in terms of nutrition talking about that's very common we have one person you know i'm eating quinoa and brown rice kale spinach hemp seeds and this part i'm going to kfc I have seen quite a bit of that, or at least, you know, it'll be multiple people in the family that are not on the same page, but it's especially different if the two parents are on totally, you know, separate wavelength uh, about all of this. The best, I love the suggestion about you just keep trying uh, in a, in a very loving, patient manner, modeling as best you can all the way, but encouraging. I love it. And getting the, the water cooler and things like that, that make it convenient and easy uh, to want to be about, you know, trying to be healthier, drink more water and eating better. Love it. That's why I say the cookbooks and things, the, anything where we can be excited, you know, about this process, I think is um, fantastic. Uh, but <clears throat> just trying to be consistent in terms of what you do. And if you, if you can, if you have a younger, uh, younger child, like I said, not getting it started from the beginning, brilliant. Once they've been doing it, just and, and talking to them like, hey, what you eat is hugely if they're or if you have like a 14, 15 year old, I'm sure they've seen some of the Rona reports and everything about that this year and how it's impacting folks and all that. So, hey, we should have been doing better about this. I need to be doing better about this. We as a household are going to do better about this. That's why we're making this changes or whatever, you know, spiel you want to put about that. But communicate in terms of why this is and then it's just being consistent uh our caller was talking about you know wanting to do better about getting that cookbook and cooking together and all that just being consistent uh and showing that this is going to be a regular uh part of our lives this is not a fad this is not just you know for a couple months or what have you this is the life of a attempted counter racist is i am mindful about what i eat every time i put a fork in my mouth spoon in my mouth chopsticks in my mouth whatever it is i'm mindful uh about what i eat and uh i I love eating delicious food everybody loves eating delicious food we wouldn't have taste buds if we were just supposed to eat like gruel every time down right uh but it should be equal healthy delicious equal like i'm not about trading off the deliciousness or the healthiness like it easily can be both and should be both 
Um, so, and you can do that. Like, it's no reason uh, anybody should think that just because there's no dairy in this or uh, because there's no meat uh, in this, that it's going to be bad, that it's not going to taste good, that it's not going to taste excellent. So, yeah, I'm all about eating great and having people be excited uh, about food. People at the retreat we were excited about the banana pudding, not thinking that this is going to be some old knockoff imitation uh, banana pudding. Like, no, we got cracking banana pudding with everything. The whipped cream, vanilla wafers, the whole nine. Like, same thing with the sweet potato pie and pineapple upside down cake. Like, I certainly don't say that you eat that all day, every day. Like, same way I would if it was regular. But I mean, you can have all that stuff. There's no need that you need to miss out on. And if anything, I will tell anybody, I eat way better. Like, it's not even close. In terms of me being uh, vegan, plant-based, I eat way better than what I eat when I just, you know, eat whatever. You know, like I said, let's go to the Seven Eleven, get a hot dog and some pork rinds, and you know, all the way. Hey, my man, this with the chicken nuggets and French fries sounds like a dinner to me, my man. Pass the ketchup. Like I'm right there, a thousand percent. Like I would have never said, let's make. Uh, cheddar biscuits? No way. Let's go to Red Lobster and order it. I'll eat, you know, 50 of them, but make cheddar biscuits? No way. <laughs> like, not at all. Uh, potato soup. Or, I, I, let's just stick with the desserts I made. Sweet potato pie? I don't think I'd made. Had I made sweet potato pie before? I don't think I'd made a sweet I've eaten a number of them, but I don't think I'd made a sweet potato pie from scratch before. Uh, cinnamon rolls. I had never made cinnamon rolls before. Like, I did not uh, eat or I didn't cook at all and I did not eat this well. Like I eat way better since being plant based. I cook way more and cook way better and just appreciate cooking. Uh, like I said, so many of the things that I that I have enjoyed eating and even some of the things now that I come to eat on a regular basis like um Veggie uh, chickpea pot pie. That is one of my favorites. I generally make that at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. Uh, you can't buy that at the grocery store. Like they have all the chicken pot pies in the frozen section and everything. But to actually make a pot pie from scratch, like, ah, uh, and then you can put the exact vegetables that you want in it, like whatever veggies you like. Bam, put it in there, make it spicy if you want. And <laughs> ridiculous, like, uh. Yeah, just enjoy being able to to cook and to cook things that are healthy, that will not kill you, are not going to compromise your immune system. Because I feel like it's it's it shouldn't be. I'm eating something that tastes great, but now I'm gonna feel bad. My man said his son's like, oh man, I eat this and taste great, but now I go to practice and I'm terrible. Like. I'm better than this. I'm a better player than this. But now my serve is off. I can't even do anything. I can't return the volleys because I oh I had that cheeseburger. I had that pork sandwich. Now I can't can't even get off the baseline. I'm all sluggish. I got the itis. That never happens on a plant based diet. Uh, like I can have. Pizza. I'm trying to think of more fill. pizza. We had pizza at the retreat. Uh, that was night one. We had pizza, uh, salad. I made a balsamic vinegar, uh, vinaigrette dressing, and we had pineapple upside down cake with whipped cream for dessert. I don't recall anybody, myself included, one or another, like, oh, I can't move. Oh, I'm stuck. Oh, I got to roll. Get me in a wheelbarrow and roll it. None of that. You, I'm full. I ate. I'm good. Like, I don't need anything else. I'm great until tomorrow morning, but not like I'm stuck. I can't move around like none of that. Like you can eat well, be energized. That's what I said for children. All it is is getting off that addiction. Like McDonald's, it'll be so many things that are associated because they have the birthday party. McDonald's is like the worst because they get you in so many ways. They get you in, reel you in with the birthday party. So you'll have the experience of hanging out with your friends there and playing and all that. And then you get all that sugar and the salt and everything. You get the toy on top of it. So it's like you got a present and they might have the clowns hanging out there with Ronald McDonald and the hamburger girl and all the rest. So it's lots of different layers. And then they got all the lights and everything. It's it's lots of layers uh, around, you know, what goes into McDonald's and how that pulls you in addition to all the poisons and chemicals in the food. 
It's lots of layers to it. <clears throat> Avoiding it totally would be absolutely best. But if you have been hooked in it, most of it is just going to be getting over the chemical addiction. Like you can put down new memories. You all can make recipes together and cook together eat without the television. I'm so glad that was said. No eating with the TV on like it should be. This is totally like sacred time like we got our food and we prepared it together and we're going to sit down and and just eat and talk about our day talk about the food talk about you know what we want to do talk about getting rid of racism <laughs> like whatever but no television like not on muted totally off no devices we're not gonna sit here and how are you gonna eat and be texting at the same time like come on you got gravy all over the screen come on no phones no devices yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just I just wanted to expound on that a little bit. Is that I I noticed the difference from my household when I, you know, it was something that I, I you know in prior relationships that I was incorrect on, and then once I noticed I shut off the TV during dinner time, it became um, it became a different level of respect that I had for the idea of even just having a family and and creating this level of communication where I would be able to ask my offspring and go, how was your day? What did you do? Um, did any teacher show any kind of racist remarks or do anything towards you? And, and then go around the table and ask everybody, how was their day? It, it really gives you a level of quote unquote, um, I, I don't know if the word is right, but I think more intimacy and more connection with your family as opposed to just this distance that's created when you're all sitting around the table fidgeting on your devices, like it was a really big um, awakening. And now, even when I make, like, I literally was on the line and we had dinner while I was on the line and everybody, you know, my significant other was like, oh, now you're on your phone? You know, now she's so used to it that she even, <laughs> she chastises me when I'm on the phone but, I, you know, obviously I'm on the call to have even to, to, to get involved in this podcast. But that was a very big step. And it, it really be, it was the least difficult. And that's how I know that everything else later on down the line will get better because they made that adjustment to get off their devices, no TV, and just have conversations and just talk, laugh, and enjoy each other's company. It was a very, very um, important aspect of um, counter racism to me because I then really learned that my son didn't understand what racism was and was still learning because of his definition was coming from school and, and his teachers rather than from our household. So with that said, I'll just mute my line, but that was a very, very important aspect of, of counter racism, just shutting off the TV while you're having dinner and just asking questions of your family and to see how they're doing. Thank you. Much obliged, sir. Uh, I just say, I think a lot of, I won't say always, because you certainly can, you know, do DoorDash and, you know, get whatever delivered and sit down at the dining table and take all the styrofoam off and unbox everything and <laughs> sit down and do it. You certainly can still do that and ask all the same questions and commune with your family. That can be done, but it's just been my experience that a lot of times that can greatly, it's like there's already a devaluation to the whole nourishing eating experience. Uh, it doesn't generally take a whole lot to get from there to, oh, let's eat in front of the TV. We got the door dashes here. Let's go sit, you know, in front of our giant 60 foot screen and, you know, eat and talk or excuse me no talking Shh. just eat and watch whatever it is we're gonna i mean hey that i've done it myself but i mean that is very different than looking into each other's eyes your attempted family members quietly eating talk about the food what do we like what do we not like what did you eat today as you said school all of that and just looking and Learning about each other while we nourish, eat our meal. That's totally different. Uh, and 
I mean, yeah, that that is a much better, I think, more. I mean, if you want to talk about whole foods and being wholesome, that is a much more wholesome experience. And I think I had just said before that television being on like, man, 10 times out of nine. That's the way I meant to say it. It's going to be a McDonald's commercial, some sort of chicken nuggets, something Whopper, something Pizza Hut, something uh, is going to be flying across the screen. Even if you're watching a movie, it's probably still going to be some chicken nuggets, something Whopper, something Big Mac, something flying across the screen like the 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 food manipulation and deception is ubiquitous in the system of white supremacy so you should be trying to get that television turned off as much as possible anyway definitely when it's time to eat tv off yes let's just kick it with each other talk to the family one of the things i appreciated most uh about the Retreats. We didn't have the TV on when we ate, uh, but frequently we wouldn't even be talking during the meals. Obviously, we did talk sometimes, but sometimes just the food was so good. It was just silence, like just kind of stunned, muted admiration. Like, oh, this is so good. And then people started talking a little bit once they finished eating. But the carrot hot dogs, I remember that was one like it pin drop silence, which is great, too. If everybody is just so elated uh, with what's on the table, then grand. We can just sit here and, you know, enjoy our little moment of ecstasy uh, together and let the meal pass. But, yeah, talk, get to know, make sure we are connected like we are. We the system of white supremacy promotes so much disconnection, being disconnected from ourselves uh, and just having to blunt our feelings and thoughts about so much disconnected from one another, disconnected from what we eat. Uh, I don't even know where this came from, how this got to be a chicken nugget or a hot dog or even that, whatever it is. I'm just eating it. (laughs) Give me give me combo number four. Right. Uh, Disconnected from what we eat. And much less all of that and disconnected in terms of how that food is going to impact me and my body. Is this what I'm eating? Is this nourishing my body so that I can be uh, have the best quality of life 50 years from now? Or is what I'm eating right now? Is this something that's jeopardizing whether I'm going to be here in 50 years? And what we heard, you are what your grandparents ate is what I'm eating right now, even jeopardizing my offspring's quality of life. My grandchild's quality of life. And disconnected from each other. We're not even, you know, paying attention to other people and what's happening with them. We're not totally, you know, just watching TV or whatever else, playing video games, waiting on the PS5 to get here so we can play some new games. Like all of that is a part of the system of white supremacy turn off those devices. Yeah, they can be constructive. You can learn a lot and all that. And they said the screen time has gone up like explosively since uh, the shutdown and everything with COVID-19, especially for younger people. So yeah, definitely. If, if that can at least be one time where there should not be a pressing need to have the TV on any other devices, cell phone, like we're eating. I don't think we need to swipe anything right now. We're eating. No phone. You can talk. You don't have to talk about racism, but that certainly is always a topic that uh, needs to be explored. But yeah, have fun. Chat it up. Try to get encouraged more drinking water and see what people are reading. See if they maybe found a book other than the hate you give. Uh, Did folks have any other comments on the topic? Again, uh, I think hugely important because I mean, whew. I was super, I was overweight, eating bad food. It could have easily been that there was no flood and I didn't change my diet and, you know, start doing yoga to take care of myself. It could have easily just been puttering along, bad weight, eating poor foods and, you know, who knows what happens. You don't want to have to, that's something that you don't want to have to wait too many years to have to correct. It would be much better to start off from the beginning with correct nutritional habits having really healthy, healthy food rituals that do not involve eating things, eating food products that are heavily advertised on television and elsewhere does not involve sitting down and having your meal around a big screen, eating more fruits 
veggies, meals where you actually prepared the food or were at least in the kitchen when the food was prepared and you could pronounce all the names of the ingredients in the meal. You do not need a dictionary or any help with pronunciation. That's what we're shooting for. That's giving you again so that you have the will and ability, racism, white supremacy, they efficiently rob the vitality of non-white people. This is about making sure we are fueled to have the energy to replace white supremacy with justice immediately. Anything else folks have to share? Um, can I add something? Mo in Dallas. Uh, thank you. Uh, the thing about screen time, the day after last Thursday, the uh, holiday known as Thanksgiving, um, I did, uh, we did indulge uh, in ways. I do have a rather moderate um, So, uh, well, a quick uh, quick story about that day. Uh, kind of ra- racism actually came up. My, uh, this isn't the point of the story, but my nieces, um, I have two um, nieces that are over the age of 18, and they were complaining about their mother, my older sister, my big sister. She's the firstborn. And um, I got, I had a chance to explain it to them because they were upset at, at her behavior. And I had to explain, I got, I got the pleasure of explaining to them that day that her behavior is, is one that she was conditioned to have. And I, I explained to them um, about their qualities. You know, I have very artsy types of nieces. You know, one draws, one um, designs uh, clothes and things like that. And I was like, well, these are all qualities your mother had when, when she was, you know, younger and before you guys were born. And, um, and I had to explain, you know, the... Uh, life impacted her in such a way that kind of, uh, you know, has her trying to survive it, if you will. And, and, and they kind of understood that. And so uh, now the the actual story, uh, no screen time, um, that we, we weren't on the phone, obviously, when we were having that conversation. I think the TV was off as well. Um, and uh, But the day after, I took my children to the lake uh, and my son asked me, uh, why were we there? And I was like, to do exactly what we're doing now. And we started talking. We had a great conversation. He actually um, looked up, saw the sky, and it was a beautiful sky. You know, we talked about the colors that were there. There was a, It was around um, uh, dusk, so we... Uh, we we saw the sun like seeping behind the clouds and rays were like coming through. And I was like, okay, that looks like, what does it look like? And they were like heaven. And I was like, yes. And we saw purple, and it was like it was it was everybody's favorite color was in the sky. It was such a good time, um, and we wouldn't have had that, you know, if if we definitely wouldn't have looked up if everybody was looking at their phones and and not outside. So the uh, the cutting down of screen time is a great thing. Um, well, that's all I had to add. I mean, my line. Oh, we also watched white people. Very good. Very interesting, too. They were at the lake, and they were working out. Uh, something to note. We were walking. They were running. I saw, I heard one lady playing a Little John song. It was kind of strange, but it was, it was, it was all very, it was a very interesting day. So that's all I have. I mean, my line. Wacky, wacky. Always great when you get to study white people. Uh, And I'd say always great when you can get experiences without the screens, TV and computer and all of that, even though it would be impossible to do this program if I weren't sitting in front of a screen right now or several, actually. Um, But that nonetheless, I did get time away from the screens today. Uh, and it was actually sunny. So I got time outside in the sun and everything, which is, you know, super wild for this area of the year. Uh, but yeah, get outside, especially with the offspring. Enjoy, get away from the screens. Uh, you can, if you can get outdoor time and then meal time with no screens, 
spectacular and then see if you can build on it from there. But uh, hopefully we can do more just to try to encourage uh, parents, especially everybody really in terms of eating well, but especially parents, uh, because uh, that book, the full title, you are what your grandparents ate, what you need to know about nutrition, experience, epigenetics and the origins of chronic disease thought the last portion of that title was important the origins of chronic disease in a book that is about food that's why we did the program today that's why super important get your children out of McDonald's like that is the counter racist move like that's way better than (laughs) going out and protesting in the street and tweeting black lives matter or anything registering to vote in my opinion like wow getting your child's nutrition together so that they eat well they use logic they don't eat at mcdonald's and they have great logic it's not just i don't eat at mcdonald's because dad said you know he'll beat the heck out of me if i you know come in here with a big mac like oh no i do not ever intend on eating at mcdonald's I know that's a component of racism, white supremacy. I do not get down with the pink slime, all the rest of it. Like they don't treat the workers well. They had the Rona and blah, blah, blah. They have a long list uh, of reasons or even just one of those is enough. Like, I don't care about the pink slime and I don't care about the Rona, but I do intend on living a long time. And I don't think eating McDonald's is going to keep me on the planet. So now I don't do that. Whatever reason they need to latch on to is all about universal man universal woman and in that eating correctly that's it we'll be here thursday for the juice the run of his life the people vs. oj simpson jeff tubin i am so excited man thursday 8 p.m eastern 5 p.m pacific back to the juice uh, if folks have any thoughts, parents, uh, if you have any tips to share about, you know, steering your children away from McDonald's, drop an email until justice at gmail dot com. Much obliged for folks tuning in this evening. Hope it was worthy of your time and energy. I hope you got to eat something really delicious. The cheddar biscuits. What can I say, man? Cheddar biscuits. Sobriety would be best under conditions of white supremacy. We will need our brain computer to solve this problem. In addition to being sober, let's hunker down. Uh, We got through, I guess, one portion of the horror day and all that, but another one is rapidly approaching. In addition, we got massive restrictions uh, with the Rona, all kinds of shutdowns uh, from California to New York. Uh, it's lots of reasons. Uh, if you got to go out, I would be very vigilant. Uh, just keep your head up, be alert uh, about what's happening around you. If it looks like somebody's being rowdy, if they're upset about a parking place or if they're shopping and they're out of items or whatever it is, it's a long line. We're not getting into any verbal confrontations uh, with folks out in public. If you have to get assistance from someone who works there or security or whatever, that's fine. But no verbal confrontations. And if it looks like somebody is getting loud, hostile, you should be thinking this person could be armed. Uh, I recommend once it gets to that point where they've loud, loud, getting loudy. Let's call this an outing. Uh, We're not taking any unnecessary risks in 2020 or 2021. Basically, Uh, we've already had enough dangers. Call it a trip. Call uh, enforcement officials or what have you if you need to. But there's just no reason uh, to try to escalate with somebody. You have no idea if this person is with 10, 20 other people who are also armed stay safe and i would share that with you know if you have other folks that you care about as well uh we're sober if you gotta go out you're buckled and alert uh if you are driving you are not on your cell phone uh again just trying to do the small things that we can to minimize contact with race soldiers badge or no uh and not on the cell phone because we got to be alert right of what's happening around us All of that said, 
Creator, we ask that you help us remain patient with other black people, victims of white supremacy. We ask that you help us remain patient with ourselves. Remind us to demonstrate the highest levels of black self-respect at all times, in all places, each and every time we are in contact with another black person. It has been time. Replace white supremacy with justice immediately. Cow signing out. Thanks all for tuning in.